What is going on, family? How is everybody doing? I want to thank everybody for the birthday wishes. It was wonderful, wonderful hearing from everybody. I want to thank y'all for that. I appreciate it. I just want y'all to know I appreciate it. Thank y'all for that. And listen, the OMB came in and gave me a, another birthday gift right on March the 20th. <laughs> Right on March the 28th, right before March 29th, they came in and gave me another birthday gift. And let me tell you, fam, I do consider it a gift. I do consider it a gift. I believe, listen, I may be different. I'm one of those people who I believe in symbolism. I kind of believe in that. I've always have. And that came, listen, they said summer for that decision. That came March 28th. March 29th is Yvette Connell's birthday. So listen, I do believe in symbolism. I do believe that it was a birthday gift because it gives us a pathway. Now, fam, listen, I want everybody to, I know that what people were hurt, and I kind of wanted to go live, and I said, no, I really, I had a lot of other stuff to do too. It wasn't just, it wasn't just, it wasn't just like, oh, I'm not going live. No, because of the birthday, I had a lot of stuff to do too. So, I, 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 you know, as we talk about this today, I want everybody to start to understand why I said what I said early on. Early on, I said something. I said that this is, um, this is a marathon. It's not going to be a sprint. It's not intended to be a sprint. It's never going to be a sprint. That's not what's going to happen. And if you expect it to be a sprint, and if you expect that you can get there being led by people who do not have expertise, if you if you expect this not to be hard, you in trouble because there is nothing that we have done that has not been hard. Listen, this thing came on my birthday and at Easter. What? I, I mean, I don't understand. What, it, at Easter, resurrection, thought it was dead. Jesus rose, supposed to be dead, resurrected at Easter. Come on, man. Like, listen, this is I'm not I'm fine with it. I'm good with it. And let me just, for those of you all who don't, who didn't see a lot of the stuff, um, this was the question. How can federal surveys or forms collect data to, de to, to relate it to descent from enslaved peoples originally from the African continent? For example, when collecting and coding responses, what term best describes the population group, American descendants of slavery, American freedmen, or something else? How should this group be defined? Should it be collected uh, uh, should it be collected as a detailed group within black or African-American minimum category or through a separate question or approach? This was the question. Now, now, fam, I, I, you know, I have to say something. I'm going to get into saying something and people, I, I'm not trying to make nobody upset. Understand, I don't hold any particular animus. I'm going to tell you why I did everything I've done. <laughs> I'm going to be totally transparent in why I did everything I have done. Now, you go to this next one, and I want to show you all where every, but some people screwed the pooch. Some people screwed the pooch. The majority of the public input on this subject expressed support for adding a category or question to identify descendants of persons enslaved in the United States, Right? There, there was support for terms including foundational black American. Now, hold on one second, fam. 
Here's what everybody screwed the pooch. We're going to talk about you. We're going to talk about you because some of y'all have gotten in the way. And I told you early on you were going to get in the way. Listen, some things that people have to understand. Some things that people have to understand is that just because you are not big enough, just because you are not big enough to make it happen and to get us disaggregated, it doesn't mean you are not big enough to get in the way of disaggregation. And at a certain point, you have to ask yourself, does this really mean something to me or am I just a fanatic for a certain person? Do I really want this thing to happen for my people or am I just a sort of fanatic for a certain person who I like. Listen, I told y'all a long time ago, and I'm just going to talk about it. I told y'all a long time ago, and we told y'all, eight hours people in the chat, we told y'all that Tariq Nasheed was not serious. He doesn't do politics. This, The genesis of this was me saying uh, Obama's not African-American in 2010. Antonio comes with this understanding of data that is genius. We come together, and we put together something that changes the way people operate. That's what it is. I don't care what you want to call it. That's what it is. Now, that's not about taking credit. That's about understanding who Tariq is. This is somebody who made documentaries or whatever. That's, and then when he, he had a rally. I want to know, I want to know what was the effect of that rally. Cause I can tell you how many people we trained at the ADOS Advocacy Foundation. See, we didn't just have people calling in wild, not knowing what to say. We didn't just have people calling in and say, I want Negro, I want LBA. We trained you on what they were expecting. That's what's, that's called organizing. That's called political organizing. And shout out to everybody at ADOS AF who do this work for free, who do this work for absolutely free. Shout out to y'all. This is not something we told you all a long time. Listen, you can if you want to watch Tariq, you can. If you want to go do whatever you want to do on this YouTube, you can do it. But we told y'all he's not a political person, he's not a political animal, and he's not going to do politics. And if you join forces with him, you're joining forces with failure in terms of politics. He didn't give y'all a way forward. He uses that term that he took from Dr. Claude Anderson, and he uses that term, right, that he took from Dr. Claude Anderson to, to, to because... To, to make money and open and open and open restaurants and uh, nightclubs and, 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 and all that other stuff. But it's not being used for you. It's not being used for political advancement because that person's not a political person. And it's part of the reason that you think you that you're not getting taken seriously by these people. Right. So I want everybody to think about that. I said this. These people are saboteurs. I have heard people, uh, these people are agents of chaos. That's what he is. He what You have to understand what a person is. Even if you want to continue to support the person, you have to understand what they are. Because what they're saying here, and let me bring it back up again. What they're saying here, there was support for terms including foundational black American, uh, American descendants of slavery, American freedmen, freedmen, black Af Af black American, African American Negro, or American Negro. This is stupid. And it pissed me off. Like, we, we, we're going to talk about the legacy orgs in a minute who did this stuff, but this is stupid. I can go back to all of you all's account and have you and show you tweeting ADOS in 2018 and 19. And there was nothing wrong with the term. There was something wrong with you. There is nothing wrong with the term. Listen, everybody's first tweet was an Adolf tweet. Everybody's first tweet, tweet was an Adolf tweet. Your first tweet wasn't no FBA tweet. Tariq's first tweet wasn't no, wasn't no FBA tweet. He did that. He went and went to, went to that because what? Because we wouldn't let him grift off the Adolf movement. That's why he just, it was just, you can't make money. You can't sell deodorant. You can't do it over here. That's not what we're about. And we're not going to let you bastardize it. That's why he wouldn't say, oh, I'm going to take Dr. Claude Anderson's. But Dr. Claude Anderson is not the one leading this path. He's not the one leading to the OMB. Somebody has to lead you somewhere. Everybody got to have that. And you got, I'm not talking about just me. Everybody think I'm talking about Yvette. Don't be dumb. I'm talking about everybody inside the movement who put together the trainings, who held trainings back to back to back for people, not only to call in, we called in and we wrote letters. 
and we coach people how to write those letters. That's how you get the designation. You don't get it one day finding out late. I remember Tariq found out on a broadcast. What the hell? I heard they having something next week. Y'all, y'all better call in. We had they having something next week. I heard. I don't know what. Yeah, of course you didn't know Tariq. He called here and said to the last minute, and he told the people to come sabotage. Hey, those of you all who are down with Tariq, y'all better get your life together because y'all are in any, any, in any better economic position than the rest of us, and you're going to have a problem if you keep following somebody who only wants to do GoFundMe me and Indiegogo's. That's not where we are anymore. I shouldn't, have to, I shouldn't even have to put that man's name in my mouth. They said they used that. There's disagreement on the term. And you Negroes who use the American Negro term, I want to slap the taste out of your mouth because if you cared about that term, you would have been there when Obama decided to take it out. Obama, oh, the Obama administration said, we're going to get rid of Negro, and none of you all who like the American Negro wanted that term. You know why? A lot of you all are far more concerned with beating ADOS and getting some grant money and just being than you are with actually getting the thing that you say you want. You are far more concerned with defeating, defeating ADOS and being the head of the perch than actually getting the thing that your kid needs to survive. Listen. This is what it is. I'm going to stay here for a minute. Even with your freedmen, you, there was nothing wrong with ADOS. You all wanted to go lead. And I said, go build. And guess what we learned after you went to build? Anybody want to guess? It didn't work. Now, I'm not saying that to be mean to you. I'm offering you an olive branch tonight. Olive branch on olive branch on olive branch. Because I said, you people think I say, if I said go build to us just to be mean to us, she's so mean, she's nasty. No, most of you all, Friday Jones, where you at? You made an announcement on Twitter when you blocked me. I didn't block, that was you. You did that. Like some of y'all got to own the way you left and how you left and why you left. But I said, hey, instead of just talking about me all day, go build. Instead of having Yvette Carnell be your obsession, go build. Go do it. And when you went and build, you realize something. And I'm not even making fun of nobody. I don't want anybody to, to I don't want anybody to interpret it that way, because that's not where I'm at right now. I'm willing to make peace with anybody right now to get what's necessary for my people. I'm doing what some of you all seem incapable of doing, because I've seen some of the comments that I've, I've just deleted them and hid you from the page. I don't know why people think that's always gonna fly. But listen, I have seen it. So I told you to go build because I know you don't have the capacity. And that's what we saw. When you had the California reparations, you couldn't fill up the rooms, right? You have, what's his name, Chad Boogie going around now saying, oh, we're going to do it. We're getting lineage. Where did you get the idea of lineage from? You all, imagine comp competing when you were at the conference crying to me, telling me, oh, my God, Yvette, I, I, I had never thought about it this way. And now you are competing with me. This is stupid. Hey, anybody who want, wants to work on behalf of collective uplift, you're welcome here. You are welcome here. You ain't never got to see my face. We have enough people in the org that you can work with. You ain't never got to look at me, and I ain't never got to look at you. But at some point, we have to decide that what that this movement, that what we want for our people is more important than this disagreement. At some point, you have to decide that overtaking the National Urban League is more important to you, and, and overtaking the NAACP is more important to you than taking over Yvette D. Carnell. Am I that important to you? You got to get rid of that obsession. You got to get rid of that. You got you to you do something about that. Say, however, there was disagreement about which term is preferred. Listen, there was nothing wrong with the term that we started with. There is nothing wrong with the term that got us here. There is nothing wrong with the people who got us here. Y'all are going to get us in trouble. You already did. There was disagreement about the term. Commenters described the importance of collecting these data um, and the values for data users and policymakers pointed to exist, existing research that shows differences in outcomes, measures, income, wealth, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, uh, like income and wealth, and stated that descendants of of persons who were enslaved in the United States are eth ethnically different, distinct from Afri from African immigrants. Af absolutely right. But where did that come from? That came from us. That came from Antonio and Yvette, and people lifted it and decided they were going to go do their own thing. Okay, good, go build. It didn't work. You don't have the capacity. You don't have the capacity to do what we did, and you've already shown that. Chris Loxon, we saw you going from room to room to room to room, going, you went in meetings twice. 
And then y'all did all that stuff to say you supported American Freedmen and then went in there and didn't support American Freedmen. So it was just there to hurt us. It did not help. You went in there and said you made a big thing and, and, and with the OMB and competing with us and saying you wanted American Freedmen. And then when it came time, you said you called in and said, I just African American and I just don't know. And I just, okay, I'm hanging up now. Choke tall. And you wonder why. You wonder why people say, eh, y'all don't even have y'all stuff together. So how are we really supposed to, how are we really supposed to take this if you don't have your own stuff together? Other commenters, including civil rights groups, opposed the collection of data. Commenters expressed concern about the difficulty of verifying that identification is accurate. The useful, well, we don't know if any identification is accurate. People call themselves Latinos all the time, and I don't know. They be white as everything. So I do not know. The usefulness, necessity of the data, the exclusion of other groups, historically enslaved people, and the creation of confusion that could make the black or African-American community harder to count. It doesn't make us harder to count. Everybody else is disaggregated. Ah, oh, this is the result of these civil rights groups. We're going to get them, too. They're getting the smoke, too. But it's a lot of smoke to go around today. There was, oh, gosh, particularly black or, Af black or African immigrants. How in the world are African immigrants hard to count? They didn't get here to 2000 majority of them and the rest of them came after 1990 you're not hard to count you just got here the plane is still hot the engine is still warm you are not hard to count the only group that the only group that the group that came and there were nearly none of them here pre-1965 so the we can go to 1965 and we can figure out who all oh, these civil rights groups are awful and y'all are giving them a play day. Not the people in the chat who do this. I'm not talking about y'all. I'm talking about these people who decide they were just going to put their name on something that we created. Don't do that. We're all just going to fail because you're running around. You don't have the capacity. It's time. Listen. Oh, I get hot as fish grease sometimes. But it's time to just take a little assessment of your capacity. You tried to do it in California. Part of the thing that happened, and I talked to reporters. I talked to a CNN reporter. I talked to an AP reporter. And both of them said to me, well, we just don't see a lot of, a, a lot of passion around it. We, we expected to see more people. They understood that you don't have the capacity. And what have I always said, ladies and gentlemen, pressure bus pipes. You don't have the pressure. And everything that we have to do going forward has to be a national movement. You are not going to be able to do it piecemeal. We are going against the most sophisticated white supremacist government in America. You are not going to be able to do this piecemeal. And if you believe that, then you are crazy. You are not going to get to disaggregation. By just going around being mad at Yvette. Well, I tell you what she did. I tell you what she said. And it don't matter whether you blocked on Twitter. That don't matter. There's a whole world outside of Twitter. What do the, the young folks say? Go touch grass. There's a whole way to do work outside of Twitter. Twitter. My email is Yvette Carnell at ADOSFoundation.org. You don't have to have Twitter to do the work. I knew this was going to happen. That's why I said go build. Let's go see what the capacity is. Let's go see how much capacity you're able to build. Not much. These grudges, gosh. The comments noted lack of in-depth research and engagement with the diverse uh, black or African-American community terminology, de definition and data collection, coding, protocol, as well as implication uh, on the counts of other black or African-American diasporic. The diasporic is centered. Centered. Meanwhile, meanwhile, you got people who was at the ADOS conference over talking about, I don't know what they got to, what they got to do. Working group final recommendation. The working, the working group did not recommend this aggregation of the black or African American category by descent, uh, uh, by descent from persons who were enslaved in the United States. They identified this aggregation of black or African American population groups as a priority area for future research and noted that additional stakeholder engagement is needed. Now, what that means, ladies and gentlemen, is we got a shot. That's exactly what that means. That means we got a chance. But that's, that's, that's Easter. That's Easter. That's giving me life. But it means that we got to be a stakeholder. It means that we got to take over these civil rights organs. Let me show you. Let me show you what they did. You're going to believe it. I know y'all going to believe it, but let me show you what they did. But it means that we have to overtake them. So the people who are out here giving everything names and stuff like that, you have to ask yourself at a certain point, 
What is most important to you? Is it most important to you getting what we deserve and, and having a new hierarchy in this country in terms of in terms of ADOS and and uh, uh, the uh, uh, American descendants of slavery, or is it more important to our show event? What's most important to you? I just want to know because I can't tell. This looks they the fact that they noted it, the fact that y'all, the fact that you knuckleheads called in with FBA, you all are morons. I'm sorry. The fact that y'all did that, the fact that y'all can't, do, do you know now? Like if you didn't, even if you didn't see it then, let's say for whatever reason you didn't see it when it happened, you should be able to see now, man. You're right, Yvette. Tariq didn't do anything. Uh, he he didn't. He said he was gone. He didn't do anything because you have to. Do, you you can't ho go around hollering. Reparation, 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 reparation. We 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 built this. We, we you can't just you you can't parrot me all the time. Like parroting me is good marketing, and that's what Tariq uses this for. It's marketing. Parroting me is good a good way to get grant money. It's a good way to get. It used to be a good way to get Liberation Ventures money. It's a good way to do that, but it's not a good way to get to the end goal, which is the finish line. If I if, if he if he wants to say so those of you all who went with Tariq, regardless of what you like me, regardless of what little name he came up for to call me because he, he's 13 years old, who cares? I don't sit around. I don't I don't I don't have no I don't stay up at nights because Tariq called me a name. That's a 55 year old man. Who gives a flying what he calls me, child? So he's 10 years away from Social Security. I don't care. Like. And I'm grown, too, so I don't care. I just think, oh, he's a child. That's what I think when I hear it. But the question becomes for those of you all. For those of you all who decided that you were going to go with him, what has he done politically to get us anywhere close to this aggregation? Because this aggregation is how you get to reparations. That's the path. You have to establish yourself as a group. You have to establish the harm. The only thing he did was go to D.C. with a black suit and brown shoes and jump around the stage. That's not it. Then he said, hey, we got to support each other. You got to give me the money for the juke joint. I'm telling you, that's just not it. So you don't have to tell me that you were wrong. You just have to know it in your head. Yeah, because I told you in 2019, he's never going to do anything about this. He's just going to use it for marketing for product. So now we don't have all kind of deodorant. We don't have all kind of stuff. What you haven't had is real advocacy. And somebody just talking on YouTube is not advocacy. That's political awareness where I parried the talking points of Yvette D. Carnell. Even me talking. I, it was raising awareness and it was giving you education. But at a certain point, I said, gotta, if we want to move it, if we want to move it, it's got to be more than that. It's got to be more than that. And that's what it entails. Right? But a priority for future research means that now we have to prove it to you. Right? But what have I always said? Fam, what have I always said? We either rise together or we fall together. I have always said that. I have always maintained that. I always have. And that's still true. I'm done fighting you and fighting the the, the 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 civil rights organizations and fighting 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 white folks. That's three things. I ain't got but two hands to punch with. I'm tired of y'all. Y'all are a nuisance. And you could be doing stuff here, right? You ain't got like I said. You ain't got to see me. I ain't got to talk to you ever in this life. We never have to meet. At a certain point, though, like there are business people who hate each other who who say, "Hey, it's business." This is politics. It's just politics. I don't even really have to know that you're here. That's, that's, that's the, that's, we have chapters across the country now. And we expect to have at least another eight or nine in 2024. You don't have that capacity. And it's time to just own it and say, you know what? I don't, I'll go back over here and do whatever work I can do over here. Because my people. Listen, I can hold my nose and deal with anybody, but I told you to go build because I knew how I was going to. I wish they hadn't, but some people need to learn. It's just like sometimes you have to tell you have to tell a kid, like, go, well, go try it and go see how they do. And then they'd be like, oh, it didn't work out. Yeah. OK, well, let's talk about now how it can be done better. Sometimes that's the best way to teach people. It's not always an insult. It's like, go build. Let's see how it works out. Let's see how many people you can get in that room. Let's see if you can create an influx. Let's see if you can be in all the, the New York Times and all the papers. Let's see if you can do that. And it's not even a knock right now. It's just saying that is what it is. And that's our where we are. I have a right to be frustrated, though. But, like, we are where we are. The question becomes, how do we move forward? And it ain't with, it ain't with no state-by-state -state stuff. Stuff happens, big stuff happens through national movements. Uh, OMB concurs with this recommendation. 
with the uh, working group's uh, determination that further research is needed, individuals and civil rights groups disagreed on whether or whether or how to implement this potential revision. I saw someone when I was looking too that um, that that um, what you call them the urban the what you, National Urban League did this in 1997 too. I got somebody go look that up because I saw the Urban League. They said they did this and they opposed this aggregation of blackness in 1997. We note that the revised SPD does not prohibit agencies from asking additional questions related to race, ethnicity, ancestry or other related concepts, including descent from persons who are enslaved in the United States. We also note that the revised SPD 15 maintains the longstanding position that race and ethnicity categories are not to be used. We didn't we never we didn't ask you about none of that. Um, <laughs> uh, the, the, the race and ethnicity categories are not to be used as determinants for eligibility of federal part, federal programs. See, that's a problem. See, whoo. I ain't going to get into that. Uh, that's another show. <laughs> Again, they get into we don't know which terms and all this stuff. So I'm not going to get too much into that because I want to get through it. They have to do additional research, identifying best practices, uh, all that kind of stuff. So they have to do additional research uh, from Afro-descended population, exploring options to support greater disaggregation uh, of data, uh, understanding how respondents interpret language, e.g. origins of the people of, all of that stuff. So they're saying we got to do more. That part is good. Now, we saw we saw the National Urban League come out early on. Right. And ask for an extension with Naleo. That's who See, they don't work with us. They work with Naleo and stuff. So we saw them. But that's not the worst part, fam. You might think, oh, them coming out and asking for the extension. They got they got caught flat footed. But let me show you some of the worst parts. There were a few parts. So this memo right here is very interesting. This memo right here is very interesting. National, the National Urban League and the National Coalition of Black Civic Participation. Well, let me tell you the one thing about both of these organizations right and they're they're talking this is april 2023 and they're talking about what they feel should happen in terms of uh race and ethnicity now first of all neither of these groups neither of these groups the the, the national Co coalition of black civic participation is one woman that's melanie campbell <laughs> I had a lot of contact with Melanie at a, at a previous job. She's one of the ones. Listen, never mind. I ain't going to say it. <laughs> Yvette, Yvette, don't say it. But listen, uh, Mark Moriel, they don't have grassroots support. So right now, the only thing that they are doing is fighting the grassroots. They, they are not. These are not organizations that have a mass of support. I don't even think the national, the coalition for black civic participation has more than one person. I think it's, I think it's like a lot of these new orgs that started. It's one person on paper. The National Urban League doesn't have doesn't have mass support. None of these groups do. But let me show you what they're going to do. So they start off kind of cool, right? They start off talking because they, you know, me and I made everybody a minority now. You know that, right? So you have to be ADOS now because me and that that stuff made everybody a minority. Everybody get what they want. <laughs> So this is their letter, and it's so interesting. If you have the opportunity, um, uh, uh, I might put a link uh, in there because you got to go read this. This thing is uh, race and ethnicity are two separate concepts. They get into that, right? In their placement on the census questionnaire, okay, okay, they get into that. Every U.S. resident should be provided uh, the opportunity to self-identify by race and ethnicity and should be accurately coded and reflected by the data. They get into that. Clear guidance. They get into that. Okay. So this is this is this is where we are. This is where we are. I want you to we we gonna they gonna get into it though. They gonna get into it. Well, they this 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 is some meaner stuff too. So let me go to the next one. though. I'm just kind of going through it a little bit. So there is concern now. There is concern that the initial proposal of a combined race and eth ethnically, ethnically, eth ethnicity question that allows for the selection of one or more race and ethnicities may, may negatively impact the ability of African diasporic respondents 
in the U.S. to accurately self-report on all aspects of their identity due to census methodology and coding. For example, there is concern whether an Afro-Latino, whether Afro-Latinos see themselves in the black African-American racial category because there are no Afro-Latino uh, Afro examples. Listen. Black immigrants represent 10% of the black uh, population. I'm skipping a little bit, y'all. So stay with me. Black, uh, uh, black immigrants represent at least 10% of the black population, a rapidly growing percentage. In addition, racially diverse immigrants from Latin and South America. This is all of this is all immigration. This is all immigrant stuff. Right? Like you see, when you see they deal with Mina. And they deal with black immigrants, and that's their priority. Listen, I'm I, I'm waiting for the memo. I'm waiting for the memo. Somebody has to give me the memo. Right? Somebody has to give me the memo showing some, somebody tell them that, like, you don't represent ADOS no more. You only represent immigrants. Right? And I understand what they really want is for make the sure a lot of Afro-Latinos are counted as black so we get more resources. But there's no concern about ADOS because we were still going to be in the black category. There's no concern about us as they speak. This is their letter. This is what your civil rights organizations are saying about you. Now, okay, let's go again. Middle East MENA. Those from the Middle East or North Africa region should be able to see themselves in the race and ethnicity standards. However, OMB should ensure that no sub-Saharan regions and populations and historically black countries are included in the MENA category in irrespective of their culture, religion, and language. Furthermore, since MENA represents uh, diverse population groups, MENA must be treated as an ethnicity, not a race. Who child, it's a lot of talk about a real small population of people who 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 wanna who wanna pull that con where you get to everybody get to be minority or disadvantaged after after wanting to be white and being white. People just get to make up everything except us. And I, I get it. I understand it. I understand how, why y'all want that count. Okay. Everybody except us get to make something up. Everybody, you, I, we can't even make up nothing in the eight hours. People say, well, I, I, I don't want to be called a slave. What, well, you, you was? Like, I mean, like, that's the thing that looms over your life. Why don't you have people call and say, well, I don't want to be called a slave. I want to be, so let me see your bank account. That's a slave account. We're talking about the institution of slavery, but let me see your account. Let me see the accounting. <laughs> Ooh. Just like people was at the 2019 conference. Oh, I love it so much. I never thought about it. Now you just, well, we've always been here. And it came to me one night, really, about lineage. It, it, it hits me in the head. And then I started thinking about it seriously. And I thought to myself, well, there has to be a lineage. Y'all paint made up whole new origin story. Stop. Everybody got to stop playing games or these people going to run over us. I heard somebody made up a totally new story. Add Mina, add Mina or Mina, Middle Eastern or North African as a minimum category. Y'all, let me tell you. <laughs> let me tell you. Y'all know the funniest thing about this? They go all in about Mina and everything. They don't even mention. They don't even mention ADOS to the last page of this. They don't even mention us to the last pages. Listen, your organizations no longer represent you. They don't. They have, they have no, they, their, their job is not the job you think it is. Their job, these national organizations, is not to represent our interests. Their job is not to use our political capital on behalf of us. Their job is to use our political capital on behalf of everybody else and then get paid for it. That's a dealer, baby. That's a pusher. I'm your pusher. So listen, I will use the capital of ADOS however I see fit to benefit other people because this group has bona fides because of how long we've been here. Because of what we did here. This group does. No other group does. Anybody tells you is a lie. Right? Anybody who tells you something different is lying to you. That's, that's us. So they use that. Let us use that. But let me just show you. I'm going to get to it. What was on this one? 
We agree with the working group's proposal to remove Negro uh, from the black or African-American definition. Oh, I got so annoyed with you all to call it. And so I want Negro. I think that you just thought you was brilliant, didn't you? But this is the big one. Fam, this is the big one. This was it right here. This was it. This was it right here. While there is a push to gather data to create a new category for American descendants of enslaved people from the African continent based on the premise of, repar of reparation, of reparation, not reparations, y'all can't even write. There is grave concern that this uh, untested proposal will harm the full and accurate count of black people, particularly black immigrants. Your group, this is, this is, this is Melanie Campbell and Mark Moriel who don't represent anybody but themselves telling you to your face that they represent, that, that, that they represent the immigrant, the black immigrant community. There is no way that, that, that they still get counted. There's a category for them. What are you talking about? And why is this your main concern? Right? There are no, and my, look at all this bold. I'm a big, I'm a big proponent of watch the language. Look at all this bold print. You didn't bold out nothing else. There are no in-depth, there is no in, there are no in-depth research and engagement with the diverse black community on terminology, definition, data collection, and, and, and coding protocol and implications on the, on the counts of black I'm so tired of this. Black diasporic populations, e.g. black immigrants. Now, black immigrants are 10%. We're 90%, and the entire concern here is them. And they can still get counted. There is, there, that should not be a concern. That should not be a concern. Thus, we urge the Census Bureau and OMB to listen to and engage with Wait for it, ladies and gentlemen. Trusted and reputable black organizations on this issue. They said, no, 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 no. No, 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 no. You don't, you don't engage with them. No, 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 no. You have to engage with people who are, who are trusted. You got to engage with the Urban League because we've been around a long time. We ain't did nothing for nobody. But you got to, they're telling you that we're not, they saying to you in your face, me and my face, we're not reputable. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. I, I, I have, I have, and we have as a group influenced the trajectory of America. Understand the way people talk right now. I don't care the way people talk about what I don't care what they say, the way they say I've been here, the way people talk offline, offline. That's us. We have, we have impacted people more in the last five years than the urban league did in the last 40 years. And Melanie Campbell ain't never influenced nobody in her whole life. And you can mess with me if you bad, Melanie, because I know you. I've met you. I was the one you asked for money doing them non-profit days. I, listen, listen, I've been around the political sphere myself. Everybody better stop acting like they're crazy and they don't know what's going on. We have led this space. We, when people know, they know, they know. They talk in the terms of descendants of slavery because of what we've done here. What has Melanie Campbell ever done? What has Mark Morial ever done for you, for me, for anybody? Who are you to tell us we're not trusted, we're not reputable just because you've been here a long time collecting a bunch of nonprofit money? These people are telling you that they get to speak for you even if they don't do nothing for you. That's what they're telling you, and you have to stand up to that. And you cannot stand up to that by fighting me. We are going to decide a path forward because they gave us a path in terms of how to deal with this, but there's no way to deal with this without taking over these relic organizations. They have been here too long. They have been leading too long. They have been in spaces wearing cufflinks looking fancy too long. You are not worth your suit, Mark Moriel. These are people that they don't, let me tell you, they don't even, they don't even, you know how much they disregard us? They don't even reach out. They just say trusted organizations. You have to distinguish and trust it. They didn't even reach out and say, hey, can we have a conversation? They don't think you deserve a conversation. They rule you. They lord over you. And they're going to do it until you tell them no. What did Cat Williams say? P. Diddy going to call you. He going to want to party. And you got to tell him no. You got to tell him no. You got to say we don't. No, 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 no. They don't speak for me. 
No, 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 no. This is not my leadership. You do y'all even know what Melanie Campbell looks like? Could you point her out in the crowd? Who is she to be in a in, in this paperwork talking about trusted organization? You don't even know her. You know, you know Mark Moriel. He's gonna make sure you see his little shiny light skinned face. He's gonna make sure you see his face and his cufflinks and his suit and his slick back hair. You know what he looks like. He's been a problem. Been, been, been mayor or whatever, all that stuff. You don't even know Melanie Campbell. And she's in here telling, she's in here writing her name on this thing. Ain't got, did none, neither one of these groups has any kind of grassroots support. What they're telling you is that we tell you what to do. We don't represent you. And what you need is representation. You need representation. You don't need somebody who says, sit over there and shut up. And we'll, we're trusting and we get to tell you what to do. This is the worst kind of boule. This is the worst kind of black respectability. This is the worst kind of scam and sham I have ever seen. I ain't never seen nothing like this. We could, I mailed it, most of these people couldn't pick you out of a lineup. I could and I would. I point right to you, her huh, right there. She did it. Right? Ain't that something? Repu reputable, reputable black organizations on this issue. This matter and related and related others are, are, are signal that the OMB and the census must engage uh, consistent meetings and communications with African diaspora organizations. They're telling them don't listen to ADOS, listen to African organizations. Make sure you read it. Make sure you read it. This matter and related and related uh, others are a signal that the that the that OMB and the Census Bureau must engage in consistent meetings and communications with African diasporic organizations like the National Urban League, the National Coalition on Black Civil Participation, to ensure they are meaningfully consulted throughout the process. Yeah, you mean you mean Ron Daniels and them too? You ain't fooling me. <laughs> you ain't fooling me. In conclusion, we urge that any and all data collection uh, practices on race and ethnicity uh, should not harm or diminish the accurate counting of black African-American or African diaspora in the U.S. We hope our com co we hope our comments outlined can be uh, can can be prioritized on the working group as the working group moves forward with their recommendations. Come on, fam. Like this, 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 this is a come to Jesus meeting. Everybody got to decide. Everybody got to decide what you going to do. We got to say it down south. What you going to do? You going to do a barbecue. Because this thing right here that we're looking at, right? This requires a unified push. This ain't no kind of thing where you can just, well, you know, um, I, 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 I love everybody or whatever. This requires a unified push, us versus them, because we have to overtake them because they're going to die in their chairs. Ron Daniels, he got to be at least, he's 70 if he a day. I don't care what you say. He's 70 if he a day, and he does, he does not care. He does not care. I tell the story over and over again. I said, Ron Daniels, when I met him, I said, we need to have a conversation. The man looked at me and walked, walked off. How he thinks about me is how he thinks about you. He, he feels the same way about me as he does the people I represent. He does all this stuff about how wonderful and black people, he thinks we're worthless. These people think we are worthless and we're, who are you? Like, uh, reputable organization. Child, I worked on the Hill. I graduated from Howard. Who are you, Mark Moria, to tell me that you're more reputable than me? And this little Melanie Campbell child, what are y'all talking about? Like, what makes an organization reputable? Well, one of the things that makes it reputable is leadership. You can't have a Negro with a baseball cap turned to the side, uh, uh, selling deodorant, saying he's leading the thing. You got to, you got to, you, you, you got to tell him no. Like Cat would say, you got to say no. I, even if you support him and you like him or you think he's funny, you got to say, bruh. At a certain point, you got to say, bruh, you, you, out of your, you out of your league with this. Maybe you like his jokes. Maybe you think he's funny. But at a certain point, you got to say, bruh. They're already talking about how we don't have good leadership. Mark Moriel, who was a former mayor and all this stuff, he's already saying that we're not trusted leadership. You are too much of a risk for us to take. You don't have to tell me. Y'all want the same guy who's over there? What, somebody sent me the clip of him over there defending Diddy or something? Y'all want that? Do y'all want that? Like with the hat and the... You, come on. You, you have to choose leadership that represents you. Looks good on paper and otherwise. You have to do it. 
You have to do it. There is no other way. I Listen, everybody has to make life is life is all about tough decisions. Right. Life is all about tough decisions. It is what it is. It is what it is. We are political. Well, we're y'all chapters. Y'all ain't got no chapters. We do now. We'll be we'll be publicized. I, I tweeted it. We publicize. We talk about it. Yeah, we do now. We do now. Right. I know some people tried to hold it hostage. We got whole Twitter accounts we can't use no more because y'all decided to hold it hostage. Well, if if I if if if, 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 I, if I don't agree with what Yvette say, well, she ain't gonna have no Twitter over here. That's immature. It's childish. You gotta. You gotta. Let me just say. You gotta want more for your people than that. You ain't gotta like me. You ain't got to like, you don't got to, but you got to say, listen, this is what's best for my community. I cannot continue to pretend four years, five years down the line from 2019 that Tariq Nasheed is going to do anything. I cannot pretend that the term Friedman wasn't taken and used just because some people decided they wanted to break away from ADOS. ADOS was the original term. It was the reason y'all came to the 2019 conference and there's nothing wrong with that term. And we got to rally around that term. It just is. And you all are not big enough, and you, you prove that in California, to do that kind of work. And it takes a national movement to do it. There has to be some kind of cohesion. I'm not saying there can't even be another organization. You just can't be running around saying we better than Yvette or whatever. Like, whatever you're talking about. I don't know. Because you, you block. <laughs> and listen, you don't, you don't need to be on my Twitter timeline. To, to, you know, that's not necessary. Uh, y'all been doing all these rallies. What's going on? Everybody say, well, Yvette, at least they're doing something, something that's not it. You got to no, you got to get in here and train all these people. You got to get in here and spend hours and train and train and train thousands of people on how to write a how to write a moving letter about your life and what makes your life different than a black immigrant. You got to get in here and you got to train people on how to talk. You know how so I like I mentioned, a lot of people came up, came in hot, sounded crazy to OMB looking a fool. If you wonder one of the reasons why they can say we got a serious and reputable organization because y'all sounded crazy. Some of y'all sounded crazy. Come in with FBA and you had and nobody had trained you. Friedman, all this stuff, nobody had trained you. But that's what an organization is tasked with. You have to be serious because this is serious work. This is a serious moment. And everybody has to sit back and say, how much do I hate Yvette? <laughs> like, how much is that worth to me? How much? Because you're not big enough to win, but apparently you are big enough to get in the way. Let me tell you, you are big enough to get in the way. So you have to ask yourself, and those of you all who follow Tariq, you have to ask yourself. I mean, we was in Atlanta, and the and the and the, and the dude said, um, he said, I identify as FBA. He said, but he looked around. He was at the microphone. He looked around. He said, I identify as FBA, but ain't nobody in the room but ADOS. Nobody's ever gonna be in the room but ADOS, in the political room. So you too, FBA, you have to ask yourself, like, as a political. As a political movement, if you're serious, if you're just playing around on Twitter, who cares? But if you're going to be political and calling the F, calling the OMB was a political act, you have to ask yourself, if you're going to do political things, how can you side with someone who is not political at all? These are things you have to ask yourself. Listen, I don't, it's, it's not up to me to answer that question for you. It's not up to me to answer for you how much your people are worth, how much your kids are worth, how much your grandkids. That's not my, that's not my cross to bear. And I can't answer that for you, but you better answer it. And everybody better start holding people accountable. Because you see what happens. I don't even know what the little people who want to be called Negro came from. They came in hot, loose, and wet, and soggy. Where did y'all come from? Who told y'all to just come in and say you wanted to be Negro? If you wanted to do that, you should have, you should have went Obama and said he was getting rid of the Negro. But you know why you didn't do it then? Because you didn't have the understanding because there was no ADOS movement. Listen, you have to stop bastardizing this movement. You have to stop bastardizing these movements. You have to. Because if we don't, we can lose it all. If you don't start, if you don't stop bastardizing this movement and giving it a hundred different names for a hundred different reasons. Because there was nothing wrong with the original name that we came up with in 2017, 18. There was nothing wrong with that name. 
You didn't want a new name. You want a new organization. You didn't want a new name. You wanted new fame. You didn't want a new name. You wanted new attention. You didn't want that because there was nothing wrong with the original name. You look in there. Don't even give me this constitutional. I, you know, I, and I respect people who say that. But if you look in this, if you look in this this document, what they said is that all these names are there to 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 all these names are presented, right? For 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 the for people who are enslaved. Um, from people who came over from Africa. They're, they understand that all these names represent a lineage, but you have to rally around one, and there's only one. This goes back to 2010 when I wrote Obama was not, Obama's problem is that he's not uh, African-American. That's where it comes from. And you can do, I can draw a line from 2010 to 2024. That's almost 15 years of me trying to make this case, and you want to run off with it after you came here in 2019. And what I'm telling you is that it's just not going to work. I'm not telling you I'm mad. I'm telling you it's not going to work. And so tonight, as you go to bed, you need to answer a question for yourself. Do you want to fight? Do you want to fight me? Or do you want to fight Mark Moriel? Do you want to fight me? Or do you want to fight Melanie Cam? Like, that's the question. Do you want to fight me? Or do you want to fight the NAACP? What do you want to do? Do you want to win? The real race in terms of our disaggregation, because they gave us a pathway to do it, right? We got to take over these orgs and we got to give them the data that they need to understand what our needs are and why we feel those needs are not reflected in the data. They gave us a pathway. You got to take it, though. And taking it means you can't be childish. Taking it means you can't be silly. Taking it means you can't be goofy. Taking it means you got to put any animosity aside. If I'm willing to put animosity aside, and you know how I feel about mm, you should be willing to do that. Anybody who ain't is just petulant at this point. And petulance is going to be a real problem. Right? These people. And listen, we're ahead of the game. Somebody pointed out to me. Shout out to them. I don't want to. I, I try not to mention people because I don't people know who I'd be DMing. But shout out. Shout out to shout out to them. Somebody brought it to my attention that Mina's been doing this since the 1990s. Making this push. Right? We just started this in... ADOS came about in 2000, legitly in like late 2017, early 2018, right? Like as like this, this, this sensation where people started really paying attention. And it's 2024 and we're already here. But it's going to take some discipline. It's going to take some seriousness. It's going to take some cohesion to cross the finish line. And all of this plan y'all been doing where we just going to have a rally and all this stuff and you're not inside of the org and you're not building capacity and you're not doing trainings and you're not being trained and you're not really paying attention to what organizational muscle looks like. You, you're not that that is kids games. You have played kid games long enough. And I sat back and watched you do it because you needed to be able to see it don't work. Now it's crunch time. Now it's crunch time. Now it's crunch time. Everybody else is getting disaggregated left and right. It's crunch time for us. You're going to barbecue a meal, dude. I want to know. I want to know. I want I, I want to see it. And listen, fam, I'm not going to take up too much, too much time um, right here because I want you to be able to call in and say your piece, right? But, you know, we can't have this the next time. And there will be a next time. We're going to do this again. We can't have everybody calling in with a bunch of different names. Listen, if ADOS was the name that you started with, that's your name. You can feel how you want to feel about it, but that's your name. That's the path. That's the path to disaggregation. That's the path to reparations. That's your name. And I wouldn't let how I felt about anybody get between me and what I need and what I want. Listen, these people are running off with it. They're running off with the bag. They're running off with disaggregation. They're running off with all the stuff. The Asians done already. Asian disaggregation, they're already doing and running off talking about that. Started doing that, doing Obama. Like, you just going to fight me? I don't think that's going to work out too well. So give me a chance. Give me a second, fam, to set up the phones. Um, a couple minutes, and we will come back. And uh, we will absolutely have the conversation. I really want to know what were your thoughts? What were your feelings? Because I didn't get to talk to you on the, on, you know, when it came out. So I will give me a second to set up these phones and I'll be back.
What's going on, fam? We are back. We are back. We are back. Uh, let me go to my let me go to my first call. Um, I'm going to 252. 252, what's your name? Where you calling from? What's on your mind? Hey, man. This William Dickens from North Carolina. Hey, William, what's going on? How you doing? Doing good. Um, I am. That, um, one, I want to kind of give a little, a little story in my life. My granddaddy, my daddy daddy, had the whips on his back. Mm -hmm. With a white man beat him with a mule whip. My mom had to quit school to share crop too, will you? <laughs> Up a little bit on me. You're breaking up a little bit for me, William. You're breaking up just a little bit for me. Can you hear me now? I can hear you now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Every every eight out person that called into that OMB used the description for the desegregation as the sin of the Oh, you're right. You're yeah. right. You're right. Wait a minute, William, because everybody called in and said, I want to be called this because I'm an I'm a I'm a I'm a descendant of I'm on a I'm a descendant of American chattel slavery. Every every person who called in, I forgot about that William. Every person who called in said I'm American descendant of slavery. They just found another term for it. <laughs> Go ahead, I'm sorry, fam. Uh, even in my comment, even in my comment, even said that the Negro that called in and said that the descendant of slavery. You're breaking up again. You're breaking up again. Can you hear me now? I can hear you better. Okay. What I said in my comment was, everybody's going to use the term descendant of slavery to try to explain the name they want to use today. That's true. That, that's what I said in my comment. What we are looking at is that you said it earlier. I don't, you don't have to like me to work with. One of the number one questions they ask you when you when you go to apply for a job, do you work well with others? Yep. Understand, in the arena what we are seeing, you write at social engineering event. Some of these people won't say the quiet part out loud. Mm. They want to be Mark Mario. They want mm. to be him. Oh. They want to be a shark. Oh, yeah, I can work good in it. They go to work 
and they listen to people say Tony, they Tony, they go along, and they do the job. But what America did is that through social media is made them see their own group of left in. Mm. They ain't got, ain't, 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 ain't no hate out person I got to listen to. Ooh. Well, hold on, 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 William, because you said you don't hit, you don't hit a nerve with me, because you said they ain't no ADOS person I gotta listen to. That included me. Like a lot of the people who felt like it wasn't, I know they've created this caricature of Yvette as this monster. That's not the case at all. What happened was this belief that there either shouldn't be a hierarchy or that I should be replaced. Right. So there were some people who believe that there shouldn't be a hierarchy at all. And, you know, you all know, as an organiza organizational model, I disagree with that. I think when you go into the military, there's a hierarchy. When you go to war, they don't say just go fight and <laughs> find the enemy. No, you have a hierarchy. And that's just you. Some, cause somebody has to own the responsibility. But the other thing that happened, William, is that some people came into the, the when I first started the foundation and came into the foundation and said, you should stand for a vote. We need to vote as, as to whether you should be here. And you should be the lead here. And that became... So some people, it, it, it came in, it was... It, some stuff happened to where we don't think we need to listen to Yvette. It wasn't that Yvette is bad or Yvette is awful. I mean, just like, it, that's not what I was. What it was like, why do I got to listen to you? So you're right. They, they viewed you through the lens of lefty. Some of them, once again, the quiet part, they going to say the quiet part out loud. They going to... Some of them call you... I could hear you. I could hear you that time, William. You said some of them saw what? Some of them, you were saying one, and said I ain't listening to no one. Yep, that's true. Hey, I agree. It's social engineering. It makes you weak. If you don't, that's why one of my biggest pet things I tell people look in that mirror, help yourself down, tell yourself the truth about yourself. Positional defiant disorder. What is that? Because I got to figure out what that is. Because it's just like because I feel like a lot of times what happened is that people were being contrarian for the sake of being contrarian, not being contrarian for the sake of I think this is a good idea and it's more beneficial for the group. That's wonderful. But just being contrarian for the sake of being contrarian is 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 it was just a different thing. But I hear you with Mama. I'm a I'm a I, and I and I agree with you. I think okay. everybody. I think everybody first they came and they decided who they want to lead. Um, and, and like, it just wasn't me. And it was, and because of that, it was just like, well, we'll leave, we'll, 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 we'll do it over here and we'll lead this thing over here. And it's just like, how do we have collective uplift if we're, if we're all going to like, even if you were to sort of, if, I mean, we're, oh my gosh. I, I, I mean, even if you were to sort, start a different organization, why did you, why did you name it something? Right. You're like, why did if this is you could have called it if you if you could have called the descendants of U.S. enslaved people and then came and still rallied around Ados as like the name. This is all just crazy to me. Um, so it's not even like the civil rights movement had different organizations. I don't think we're. I think we should try to be a part of this one. But they had different organizations, but they still rallied around the same kind of goals, objectives, and things of that nature. They didn't have a term back then, but I'm sure if they did, they would have rallied around the same term. So I appreciate you, William. I got a lot of calls, but I sure do appreciate you. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead, man. All Appreciate right. you. Thank you so much. Time. You too. Bye-bye. Crazy. 610, this is crazy what people do. Uh, what's your name? What you call? Uh, oh, uh oh I lost. Wait, and where you from? No, I'm here. Okay, I thought I lost you. <laughs> no, Tiffany calling from Pennsylvania. Hey, Tiffany, what's going on? Oh, nothing. I'm trying to understand the topic um, at hand. So, people are at having the issue with the term or the the title ADOS, correct? Well, no, we, it's, it's, it's more complicated than that. We 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 had a whole push at the OMB that didn't go our way. You know, Got to write that down. Defiant. Okay. That's wrong. So I thought it was more along the lines of what your, your guys' movement stands for. And um, as, a, as versus other people, uh, stance on what 
they should be called like FBA, ADOS. Well, no, we started to push. We we started to push at OMB um, for us to be called a certain thing, and a lot of other people showed up and said, "No, we should be called this." And they said, "You OMB basically said you all don't know what you want to be called." Um, and and civil rights org disagreed as well, and that was the that was the the entryway into this part of this the first half of this conversation. Yeah, um, just to touch bases with the first half of the conversation, because that's what I understand the most. I think it just it takes like the, the collective of Black people to come together and decide, because I think this has occurred before in history where Black people sit down and say or have the conflict of what they want to be called. First, it was like colors, then Negroes, then Black. Now it's African American, and now we have to transition to this other name simply because foreign blacks are coming in and kind of benefiting off of our ancestors' labor. So, um, and we would like to benefit from that. And we have to separate ourselves from those foreign blacks, like Africans or Caribbean or whatever, so forth. So I think that black people, black American people, should come together and, and designate a title solely for us. I don't necessarily like the term ADOS, um, Descendants of slaves, American descendants of slaves. It's American. It's American descendants of slavery. The insti- the institution. But I think it's it's American descendants of slavery. The institution, not American descendants of slaves. But the uh, the other problem is you you what you're basically oh, okay. ask what you're basing us what you're basically asking us to do is to come to come together and start over for no for no apparent reason, like because there's nothing like there's nothing wrong with the term just because you don't like the term. This is not a pair of jeans or a new pair of shoes. Like this is a this is also a term. Mm-hmm. This is also a term that is widely adopted. Like even when you, when, even when you, I was even when you see scholarly papers. Now I saw somebody was writing a paper on Ados Health, and they said American descendants of slavery. I saw another one in the institution of higher ed, uh, where somebody was talking, and they said basically Ados. I saw another institution. I saw another person who was talking about um, uh, somewhere in Minnesota talking about health. This is a word that has caught on. Like we have this idea that like I don't like it. It doesn't feel good, and you should investigate why it doesn't feel no, good. No, no, no. I, well, no, hold on, let me, let me, I'm, I'm gonna let you finish. I'm gonna let you finish. I'm gonna let you. I'm gonna let you finish. I'm gonna let you finish. I'm, I'm going to let you finish. I'm gonna let you finish. But I wanna. I just wanna chime in and say, like, you don't come together to start over because, like, we necessarily don't like the term. I think you come together if the term, like, is problematic. Like, but you don't come together to say, ah, I just kind of don't like it. No, we have. This is a widely adopted term now, and there's nothing wrong with the term. So I'll let you finish. Like I promise. Well, it is problematic because it's such a broad term because there were other people here that were in space aside from black people, like these quote-unquote Native Americans, you know. Uh, they were also descendants of slaves. Um, they didn't, it didn't last as long, and they were pushed to reservation, and, uh, you know. But they can claim that they are also American descendants of slavery, and any other smaller groups that were here that were put into the system of slavery or indentured servitude, they can actually like enable their way or try to. They can't. Get, you know. They can't. Let me. Let me. Let me. Let me. Let me. Let me just say this. I don't. I have. I have 15 calls on the line, so I don't. I don't necessarily have time. But what I can say to you is that the OMB told you that they can't. The OMB put up. The OMB said all of these names. The people, the FBA, they said that all of these names, the, the Friedman, the, the, the ADOS, they said all of these names are names that people want to be used for people who are descended from enslaved Africans. So the OMB totally understood that this was about lineage. They didn't have the confusion that you have. They didn't believe that there was another group that could come and I'm occupy. Not, I'm not confused. No, 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 no. They, they, didn't, they, didn't, they didn't believe. They understood. So the government understood how these ter- the government understands how these terms are intended to be used. They understand that if they select, they understand that whichever word, the d- term that they select will be used for the descendants of, 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 and they said Africans who were brought over here and enslaved. That's what the OMB said. See, sometimes I need y'all to go and read the decision before you call in. I know it's long and sometimes it's cumbersome, but just go and read and you'll understand that the government absolutely understands that these terms are intended for us. Now, you make sure you have a blessed day. <laughs> I don't know. I think that it could be used for other people. 
It could be used for everybody. The government said in their thing. Like, understand this, family. The government says if you go to the OMB, they say all of these terms are to be used. That They understand that these terms are used to capture the descendants of Africans who were brought over here and enslaved. The government understands that this is about lineage. So if you go and say anybody can use the term, what you are saying is that you don't understand the decision and you have to go and read the decision. Like, I don't know why we want to just talk. Just go read it. It's available online. A lot of us tweeted it. Just go read it and you will see that the government doesn't have that kind of confusion. The government totally understands and they and the government spelled it out. All of these terms that people have brought to us, all of these terms, ADOS included, are used to describe this certain group of people. And you're going to come to me and then say to me, but it could describe other people. No, the government has told you what they're going to use it for. That's why y'all are frustrated. Some of y'all, I, you know, whew, I just don't feel who, who, 929, what's your name? Where you calling from? What's on your mind? Hi, my name is uh, Rashad in the Bronx. What's going on, Rashad? Good evening, everybody. I want to first say thank you for uh, educating the young sister because at the end of the day, that's what she wanted to know, and that's the difference is that they already decided it would be for us. And all, uh, speaking to the name, I think it's perfect. I don't. I want to respect everybody who has different ideals, but that's not what it's about. We got a war coming. We have to fight together to win. We're not everybody else. Y'all are fighting over semantics. We did, like you said, perfect statement. We're not coming together to start over. We need the momentum we have. We need anything that's in our favor already established. We're not coming here playing games. You have to understand the severity of the situation we have. This is a chance. This is an election year. I, my heart, doubt that it can move that quickly. But imagine if we were already past this. And we had ADOS already decided amongst us, and it's an election year, and we can come together and what we could ask for as a group politically. And as far as the other brother, Mr. Tariq, I listen to him. I listen to everybody. I listen to conservative media, media and I'm going to leave his content as what it is. But when it comes to spe specifically this name or that one, American descendants of slaves captures what we are going after. We are Americans. That whole flag controversy, listen, we get to conservatives and say, yes, we're accepting our American. You are American. We are all together. We are the descendants of slaves. My ancestors' wages were stolen. Their freedom, all these, all the things that this country stands for was stolen from generations. I have ancestors who lived and died, never knew a day of freedom. Mm. That's why I'm different. You have to come together, young sister, everybody, and I'm not mansplaining. I respect everybody's opinion. Everybody has the right to be heard. We all have opinions. We are not a monolith. We get it. We get it. I signed up tonight. I listen to you all the Appreciate time. Appreciate you. To Appreciate you. Tonight it hit me in my spirit. It hit me in my spirit. I said, no, man, I'm doing whatever I can in New York. Sign me up. We got ADOS New York I'm out there, too. To we got ADOS New York out there, too. We can hook I you right I'm up. I signed up. I yeah. signed up. I'm not going to waste your time on that. I already signed up. I'm going to contact. I'm going to do what I can. I'm going to donate. I bought shirts. I'm doing everything I can because I already understand the severity. And just to give you a quick, I know you got calls, so I'm going to let you go. But just to give you all a quick background, I'm 34, born in 1990. I grew up in Mobile, Alabama. I'm, I went to live with my father when I was 15. I moved, she sent me up to the Bronx to live with my father. I've been here ever since. When I was 18, I graduated from a vocational school for plumbing. When I was 18, I got into the union at 18. I've been a union member, New York City plumber, since I was 18. I have a great career. I've been making over $150,000 for the last 10 years. I really, you know, I can, we all need money, but I'm okay. Mm -hmm. So these people talking about, yo, we got conservatives out here talking about, oh, me personally, I don't want reparations. And y'all over here arguing about the name. We have a war coming. We got black people out here talking about all oh, shit. They're not playing. They're not playing. And we they you and they united. Out here speaking for us, like he like he black saying nigga and shit. Like and y'all talking about oh I don't want I don't like Adolf. Like bro, we we have to fight together to win. We are not these other groups. I don't even have to name the names. And I'm gonna just say this: if Puerto Rico, who is a part of the United States technically, somehow got reparations for some type of unfair treatment from the past, let me just ask you this. Could 
you find a Puerto Rican out here having anything to say about it? No. In the negative, if, if they were doing well or not themselves personally. No, they gon' they gonna line up. What's best for us? I'm sorry, I'm gonna let you go. Appreciate Thank it, appreciate so it. No, I appreciate I, it, I man. Say, take care of yourself and and please understand, you know, I feel it for you in my spirit. Like you you know, regardless of what people think, you're gonna probably uh, you know, rise from the chaos and you know, you're gonna be a target because this is a serious conversation. Everybody listening, please like this is the time, bro. Everything's funny, there's games going on, D is interesting. This could change our lives. This could change our our respect level in this country. Appreciate this could it. make us who we are to be, who we are to be in, in everyone's eyes. Not that we care about what they think about us, but it matters perception. It matters what we're owed. It matters the truth about what this country did and what they owe to who. Thank you, fam. I appreciate you. We're, and thank you. We're thank you. Time. Yeah, we're wasting time. Night, That's a perfect everybody. way to end this. Thank you, fam. I appreciate you. We're wasting time. And let me tell you, they already done said that we can't. Listen, fam, let me ask y'all, what do y'all think this this whole push that says that we can't, that they can't teach reparations, that that's critical race theory, what do you think that came from? Don't you think that came from the reparations movement? Like, what do you think that came from? Like, they're out, that's how they know this is serious. They know this is serious. That's why, that's why, the, that's why the racists are getting out here saying you can't teach critical, that's critical race theory. You can't teach that anything was stolen from the Negro, the, you know, these, you can't teach that them, you can't teach that. That's why they're saying that. They know this is serious. We over here playing. They know, well, we're not playing. ADOS ain't playing. ADOS AF ain't playing. But you can't do it this way. Like, you can't just, I can't, it's, it's, you, you can't be fighting just wasting your, you know, it's called a war of attrition where you're just fighting on all corners. That's a war of attrition. That's not what you want. And just say, we're going to get together and we're going to start over. We can't do, ain't nobody can do that either. <laughs> And I think regardless of, like he said, then the problem for foundational black American was always the word black in it. Like, you're just going to be, like, we're trying to disaggregate inside of blackness. Like, we're trying to, like, kind of break out and describe succinctly who we are. Describing yourself as black again doesn't do that. I don't know why that was always so hard. Um, but but let me go to the next caller. I am going now to 786. 786, what's your name? What are you calling from? What's on your mind? Hey. Uh, this is uh, Chuck. I'm coming, calling from Florida. What's going on, Chuck? And I have a question. Um, so I am bi-ethnic. Uh, I have one parent who is a black American, one parent who is a, a Nigerian. And what role do bi-ethnics have in this discussion? So, for instance, there are millions of us who have one lineage in Africa or the Caribbean, one lineage in America. Are we part of this conversation? You're, you're, you're saying you're saying you're saying one of your parents is ADOS. Is that what you're saying? Correct. Well, then you qualify. It only takes one parent. Right. Okay. So so yeah, you're in the discussion. You're in All here because right. if you have both parents, no, you're not. But you have one parent that tr that traces you back to slavery. So yes. All right. And you're here. Th there are. Um, it seems to be that there is a competition for uh, different names to describe the same movement. So uh, how how does everybody uh, homogenize themselves behind Eidos and put away, you know, being black Native American, Hotep, black Hebrew Israelite? How do you uh, get everybody on the same page? Well, like, this is the first page. This is the first page. Like, Eidos was first. And then we have all of these, the only, and you can say, some people will say, well, no, FBA was first because Claude, no, 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 no. Tariq used F ADOS long before. Go check his, go check his Twitter timeline. Like and he only used, he only started using FBA because he knew he couldn't, he couldn't grift off of ADOS because we were very resistant to it. So ADOS was first. ADOS defined this whole space. And I don't, I don't, I, I, I don't, I don't know why, I don't know why some of the other things came up because I don't think the people who classify themselves as, in, are, as indigenous are having this fight. Um, I don't I think Hebrew Israelites in terms of who they are in terms of religiosity, you know, they may they may or may not. We have people in this movement in this movement who do identify as that. We have people who don't. So they may so that's a different kind of conversation. I don't think that I don't think how they identify in terms of in terms of uh religion pro prohibits them from picking us and being a part of the movement at all. I in fact, in fact, as a matter of fact, I know it doesn't. As a matter of fact, it makes them more want to be a part of the movement more because of because of that that religious interpretation. And then my last question is: moving forward, as uh, immigration, uh, as immigrants become more and more the population in America, 
and by there are more and more by ethnics what is the future of ados like um how how what will ados look like in the next 50 years Oh, I don't know what it looks like in the 50 years. I just, I just, in, in that 50 years, I want us to have reparations. And I want, I, I, be, I believe, I've always said this as a, as a view that, that countries should have borders. Like, I don't know what defines a country if they don't have borders. And our borders are really porous right now. Um, I do, I do believe that, you know, that has to be taken under control, but I can't say what it looks like 50 years from now. It's just too much. It's just too much in flux for me to make that prediction. So as, as divestors and Hatchford brothers, and swirlers have mixed children. Uh, the ADO, you know, cohort is gonna it's gonna look more like the United Nations. So uh, I was just wondering, as as a biased, you mean you myself, mean more like you mean there's gonna be you mean more like me? You mean it's gonna look more like me? <laughs> Correct. More That's like, like sometimes you know, like ADOS has this look too though. ADOS has this look too though. It's not just the by ethnics who have this look. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. You have a good one. Bye-bye. <laughs> Woo! Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Wait a minute. Let me get let me get to the next call. Y'all got me over here acting up. <laughs> oh, America's gonna look more what? Look more light skinned? <laughs> Some of us, ADOS got everybody. ADOS has the most beautiful caramel, the most beautiful dark chocolate, the most beautiful pecan, the most beautiful, come on, man, honey dip. Come on, man. We got everything. We have the gamut. We run the gamut. We look like everything. Um, we descended from slaves and slave masters, y'all know. <laughs> okay, 281. 281, what's your name? Where you calling from? What's on your mind? Hello. Hey, what's going on, fam? Uh, oh, hey, yeah, yeah. I just want to know if you can hear me. Um, <clears throat> when I um, when Ados went over this that that that, that business, uh, uh, Harvard, and beat them, beat the hell out of them, I, 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 I came to the conclusion that um, Ados is the legitimate political wing of the uh, grassroots reparation movement. No doubt, no doubt. When I um, when I when I when I when I saw what F FBA is doing, I came to the conclusion that FBA is probably the legitimate, for lack of a better term, military wing of the grassroots reparation issue. In the last maybe years, nine months, I've noticed that you all are starting to sound alike. You're starting to say the same things. You've run out of words to kind of avoid each other. You, you, you're saying the same things now, and it's a beautiful thing because I always knew that it was going to come to this point where you're going to have to coalesce with each other. We, we, but, but, fam, let me just let effort. me just stop you for a second. Let me just stop you for a second. If somebody is watching my videos and saying everything I say, of course we're going to sound alike. Like, <laughs> no, but it's not we yeah. sound alike. It's you sounding like me. It's not us sounding alike. It's you I, I, parroting I probably, me. But, well, well. Uh, you can't the language. You can't afford, avoid each other anymore. The language because you're going in the same direction. If I if I if I repeat everything you say, are we going in the same direction, or if I, or or am I just repeating everything you say? Hello. Well, God bless you. <laughs> you hung up. <laughs> Y'all got to stop. Like, like you know, you know. I, I was the first one to say, somebody said, oh, Yvette, you stealing. You said no more kumbaya. That's what he said. No, I said that five years ago. Stop. He said there are no more people. You know, I said that six years ago. Stop. Oh, my God. People be pulling to the archives. People be like, y'all sound alike? Yes. If you if you parrot me and if you mimic me, we're going to sound alike just because that's that's the essence of parroting and mimicking. 617, what's your name? Where you calling from? What's on your mind? Hey, that is Reggie from Boston. How what's going doing? on, Reggie? How you doing? I'm doing good. This is, this is a, a great show. Um, and you said it before, but I'll say it again just to remind everybody that the genesis of the whole idea of the need for disaggregation started with the Obama idea. Like, Obama's the key here. So, because I, I hear a lot of people talk about, hey, I, 
I got into this room or I, I, I did this meeting. But you came in with the idea that was birthed by Yvette Carnell and Antonio Moore. And I, and I think it's time that people just sit with that regardless of how you feel about Yvette. Because whether, whether you're for or against, you know, that idea or the term, America is dealing with it. Like within the political lexicon of America, it's, it's descendants of slavery or a derivation thereof. Whether we're talking about descendants of slaves or descendants of a slave person, they're talking about the descendancy and what that means and what America should do about it, for or again. If you look at even the, the Republicans and the conservatives, you know, having a fit, you know, Charlie Kirk is like, oh, they're going to the OMB and they, they want this category for descendants of slaves. We're going to see reparations in our lifetime. I got to stop them. I think down in Florida uh, or, 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 or one of the red states, you have, you, you have people actually introducing laws, like not, not just no CRT. They're going further and specific to where you can't deal with the subject of the civic slave. Mm. That, language, wow. that language is in the actual legislation. And wow. So people really people really need to just decide, do you love your people more than you hate that? It's like you, you really have to ask yourself because I it looks like people hate that more than they love their people. And I saw it at the OMB to where, to where people who are otherwise intelligent in some ways completely unravel. And I, I'm not going to name this, this person publicly, but like if you go through it, you'll hear different examples of that to where it's like, you know, don't, don't do ADOS, you know, don't do this. They they they, they trademark and this. Stop them. Stop that. Stop that. And right before that person's time was up, they tried to go into into the story of their life, of how slavery and what came after affected their life and their family, and they didn't have but ten seconds left and got cut off. And and I feel like that's a microcosm of what's happening across the board. That all of your political activity, your energy, your emotions are are, are directed at stopping that or stopping Adolf. This just this just ain't the, the splinter group. These are like the the, the Pan African as well. Like I want to stop Adolf. As it, I would respect it if you were making the case for that. This is what I believe. This is what I feel like should happen. And you spend your advocacy doing that instead of trying to take me down. And that's why I feel like that's why the OMB is like, okay, these people are crazy. Because, like, they're, they're just using it to snipe at each other. And that's why I'm so proud of, you know, the work you've done and the work that the org has done to actually train people to actually advocate. Yep. And, you know, and, 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 I, and I feel like that, you know, you... Uh, bringing out the olive branch one more time, I feel like people should consider that. I, and now, now I'm getting more name. If, if, a, if a group like NAASB can can still, and this was recent, they, they had a statement saying, uh, you know, we applaud Nicole Hannah Jones for saying the thing slavery, you know, ironically. But then at the bottom of their press release, they're saying, oh, and Cobra and NARC, Come meet with me. The, the same people who said these are bots. While 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 you were there, these people are bots. These people are MAGA. These people are this. People are that. Ray Winbush called on, called for the FBI to investigate it. So if, if after all of that, you still say, in Cobra, and not meet with me. I don't see any reason you can't say that Yvette Carnell meet with me instead of holding a grudge because you don't like the way she talks to you. And and so yeah, y'all gotta I, decide what you want to do. I, I agree. I agree with you, Reggie. But I ain't never said nothing bad to you. I you you left because you don't. It was just you didn't want to be led. Like you felt like who is she to do? Who is she to do X Y and Z? And the problem is, Ados had 
Like, at the point, we've been, ADOS has been in, from CNN and New York Times or whatever, like, I, f I honestly feel like in terms of slowing down our momentum, it came because of all these different groups and all these different names. Because ADOS, y'all remember, ADOS was everywhere in 2019. And then people started breaking off and there was these different names. People started going in different directions. You have to go in the direction that the momentum is leading you. Now, once we get to where we got to go and we get reparations and stuff, you want to go do your own thing, by all you means, do your own thing. And I said it before, Reggie, you ain't got to talk to me to work with me. If you don't like me, that's fine. I might not like you. Although I don't hold the kind of animals that a lot of people have, but I don't, it's life is too short. But you, you ain't got to work with me. We're big enough now to where you don't got to work with me to work with, to work, to be a yeah. part of what we're doing. Yeah, you, you, you're right. But yeah, like, but like I said, you know, you, it, it just doesn't make any sense to us. Like where people are launching structural attacks, even with, with Tariq trying to kill the, the, um, the, you know, the push to, you know, Court, the Supreme Court ruling in favor of upholding the Civil Rights Act of 1866. So you have these people like attacking the core of what you were doing at that point, and you still come back kissing their ass. That's that's crazy. I agree. People got to grow up. That's, I that's, agree. That's all I got to say. Thank you, thank you, Reg. I appreciate it. Always a great call with you. I appreciate it. And let me just say one other thing, like. Even with what the young lady said when she called in, you don't you don't go to come back together and start over, and you lose all your momentum. So it's ADOS. ADOS been in all these news magazines, done all these interviews, NPR, New York Times, CNN, ABC. We've been everywhere, right? And you you lose all that momentum because you want to start over and hit the reset with a new name. That is stupid. And sometimes you just got to understand when a thing is stupid. You know, I I told somebody on Twitter I want to do a, I would love to do a documentary at some point about all the lies that have been told about me. Y'all remember the other lie Tariq told? He said, I got connections in, in, in D.C. that says Yvette's been running around here meeting with Democrats. She's a Democratic shield. It was a total lie. Some people are just pathological liars, and there's nothing you can do. But, like, you can go back now and assess everything that you heard about me during that time. You can assess it. Did I become a Democratic shield? That was five years ago. Did I become a Democratic shield? Yeah, I know she just, she just, this is the thing to just get people in the Democratic Party. Did that, did, that, did that, any of that happen? Those of you all, you have to go back and be able to assess that and be like, dude, that have to have been a lie. That was five years ago. That was 2019 when he said that, and none of that stuff happened. He must have been lying. Yeah, he was lying. He lies about everything. Uh, 404, I'm coming to you. Um, oh, no, 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 no. I think that one already called. Um, 734, 734, what's your name? Where you calling from? What's on your mind? Seven three four. Hey, what's going hey, on? Hey, this is a uh, Pat Al from Flint, Michigan. Uh, I just want to say I appreciate you as usual. You really showing the patience of Job today with people that don't know enough. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I wanted to say you asked the first the question that we got to is how you felt, and I really felt pretty sick uh, to my stomach because mm. it's a lot of plotting going around. Um, about something that can happen so quickly and in 10 years if we don't tighten up we're out of there in terms of the value of our lineage in this country and it's uh it's pretty sad and people don't take that that very seriously and and the other thing about adolf showing up from what i heard from the shadow babbler i apologize for listening to him. <laughs> but i believe don't do we, it don't do it i to believe Adolf, adolf had more people call in and write into the OMB than any other Of course group. we did. My numbers are not not correct. No, of course so we that did. That tells you that by a large margin. That tells you that people not being on on their square and being taking things personally and wanting to start them and fame and all this stuff, they don't care about the people and and I think Operation Takeover is about to uh 2.0 or 3.0 mm. wherever we're at because uh, the spotted owls are out here still trying to get things done, and I just appreciate you. And <laughs> Thank you, fam. I appreciate you. <laughs> spotted owl. <laughs> Thank you, fam. Yep. Take it easy. You too. Bye bye. Yeah, I think, yeah, of course we did. Like, is there any, is there any, there, there's no doubt. You can go back and listen. We had the most calls. And of course we had the most letters because politics is work. And we had the people who were willing to work. And we had the people who know what they were doing. We had the people who were at the training. So of course they did. Like, it's, it's no, it should be no surprise to anybody that we had the most people. None whatsoever. None. 
And so what do you do with the group that you said you were going to outbuild and outwork? And it's not, it's, listen, it's not, um, nobody's saying it's your fault. Like, we, we, we gave you your education. We started in 2019, 18. Like, the first conference was 2019, but 2017, 18 went from American DOS to ADOS, right? That was the evolution of it. So, of course we did. Like, it's just like you have to have a come to Jesus meeting now about what's important to you and what's important to you and your family. Um, I'm going now to um, 850-850. What's your name? Where you calling from? What's on your mind? How you doing, Miss Cornell? Pretty good. How are you? Not bad. This is uh, this is ES three from Freeport. Hey, what's going on? Not much. Uh, to answer your question, you know, uh, I I found out when I was in a um, class. Uh, oh, yeah. I was I was <laughs> I was hurt. I, I mean, I could not focus. <laughs> I, had to, I had to take a break and walk out out of the classroom completely. I mean, I, you know, I was totally taken aback. Um, and, and I guess what, what, what was going through my mind was all the work that we had put in to, you know, get people organized, get people uh, learning on the the, 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 the process. Mm. Mm. And, and, not, and not our work, but the outcome. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it was it was very painful. It was a very painful experience. Uh, the only thing I could I could think about was you know all the the people who were calling in and just shouting, or the people who were calling in and just you know you know calling you out by name. <laughs> and, it, 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 and I wasn't I wasn't I wasn't mad at them. You know I wasn't like oh it's their fault. I was just, yeah, I was just like, so just like, where are we? <laughs> As a people, like, where are we where you can, where you can be in this space, you can come in this, in this arena and just, just show your whole. But talk. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Show your posterior. <laughs> and. And then as you're as you're talking tonight, you know, I, I started thinking about all the people who didn't call. Like I didn't hear Hannah Nicole or We didn't hear Nicole Hannah, Hannah Jones talk about Nicole disaggregation. Jones. Did we? Call in and give her, you know, well thesis ideals on lineation. Um, I didn't hear any any other person, you know, from from the YouTube, you know, political not I put in quotations political space to call in, uh, whether it be a shadow word or <laughs> or anybody else. Nobody called in of these these el- you know of these tiers of people to to voice their you know their political chops uh, you know for for advocating politically for this uh, delineation. Um, and, and my mind my mind was just going as far as you know all the work that we did. And here we are, and and then you said something else in this in this um, this YouTube, and she, you talked about like you know fighting, you know, and the, 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 the thing that popped in my head was war, like and like I started because I'm in the military and mm-hmm. well, I, I work for the military, and I started thinking about like guerrilla warfare, you know, and like these people are fighting for something, and and you said that you know nobody just goes out and and fight, you know. And you know, and, and and just destroy stuff without a, a target, you mm-hmm. know, or a, or a or a or a focused vector, right? And in guerrilla warfare, you do fight, you know, on random fronts, right? You mm-hmm. you fight dirty, you 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 put bombs and things in weird places mm-hmm. to hurt the insurgents, and it's all random. But there is a focus, even to that. Yep. Right. Even to guerrilla war. And, yep. And, and and I started thinking about like you know, uh, like the, our the Korean War. You know how how we went in and you know our, our soldiers were getting killed and and we didn't actually win that war or Vietnam, not the Korean, but Vietnam War. And our soldiers didn't come back with a sense of victory. Nobody won in that, right? Mm-hmm. Everybody lost. Everybody lost, right? And so here we are. <laughs> 
And I don't mean to take it to that to that extreme because war is horrific and lies are law. But here we are as a people, right? And I'm just seeing this chaos, you know, this this result, and it came, and it was for nothing. It, it was for absolutely nothing. Well, it was for and something. I, it was for I, something. I, I, we're going to show event. Oh, yeah. Like, it was for something, though. It, it was for the wrong thing, right? It was for, we're going to show event, right? That's why you heard people call up there and mention my name. Like, you were not supposed to call yeah, up yeah. there and talk about me. It was supposed to be about the designation. You were not supposed to talk about who Yvette thinks she is and she just thinks, and I tell you another thing about her. Like, that's that wasn't the point. You have missed your mission when you talked about military. You, have, you don't understand the mission if you think the point of you calling is to talk about me. You walked away with nothing, mm -hmm. nothing, and I'm, I'm really, I'm really wrestling. Like, like the only, honestly, I, I commend you because even in this, you're, you're, you're trying to say, hey, here's an olive branch. I want this for all of us. I don't want to fight. I want, the, I want reparations for our people. Right? I, I get that, and I, 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 I believe that people just can't be reasoned with. I think some people just mm -hmm. want. To watch it all burn, they, they really do. And the only thing that we can do, at, at being an org or just being people out here just trying to fight the good fight, is we gotta outwork them. Mm, yeah, that's what I said. Their family, their family gets a hold of this message, and then when they hear their, these these people, you know, talking about all this other stuff, they're like, "What are you doing? That doesn't make any sense." And they, because we have no, you. You coming out with this, this this heartfelt plea, like, hey, this is, we can't win like this. It ain't going to work. <laughs> They're not hearing it. They're not going to hear it. It's going to, our message is going to have to be, our message is going to have to be in the heart of their loved ones, and they're going to have to drown them out. Mm. And that's the only way. I, I, see, I hear your point. You. I, 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 I really, I really commend you, but... If, if, it didn't, if it didn't happen in, in the California reparations, mm. if it didn't happen, if it didn't happen, you know, uh, with, uh, in, in the Massachusetts uh, housing bingo ball, if it didn't happen, if it didn't happen <laughs> uh, I, I don't know if people know, but in Florida, right, they have a, they have a uh, legislation that they're trying to push to end the, to, 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 uh, to, uh, I appreciate it. And I, you know, I said that, I said that, you know, I, I, and I agree. I think, and I think, and I think, you know, I offer the Olive Branch, anybody who wants to come, there may be some people who got mad or whatever, or, or started working and they, they weren't a part of the split. They just started working with some people who they, you know, whatever you're welcome. But listen, I do believe that at a certain point, like if you, if, if, if you have competition, right at a certain point, what you have to do um, is you just got to win. Like if this person is just bothering you because y'all is just side by side running all the time and y'all are always side by side at a certain point, you just got to be out of here. And so at a certain point you do have to or out organize and outwork people. It's sad because you really would want people to say, Hey, you know what? This is really screwing the pooch. And we left thinking we could do one thing. It didn't work out. You know, if Yvette is saying do this or whatever, we should come back and do that. That, but if you don't want to, you know, I, I feel like, I feel ES3 because what he's saying is just like, we just got to outwork him. And I think we can do that. 
Like, I think we can do that. I think we have all, we, we have, we stood up a bunch of chapters, um, in 2020 and 2023, we standing up some more chapters, um, in 2024 and I, you know, and, and we're the only ones doing that. So I, I, I do believe it's possible. I think we're doing it. I think it's unfortunate that we have to do it, but we are where we are. Uh, 914, what's your name? Where you calling from? What's on your mind? Um, my name is Alan. I'm calling from Mount Vernon, New York. What's going on? What's on your mind? How you doing? Pretty good. Um, it just seems to be a lot of unnecessary competition, but what I feel about it is, you know, sometimes when you generate enough energy to get past that competition, it actually helps you to get to the finish line as well. Mm. Mm, that's so, interesting. I, I think, you know, like in the past, it was different organizations and, and people kind of going against the grain just to compete with people that pretty much have similar interests. But at the end of the day, somebody's going to prevail. And I, I really think this movement is the one that's most important. I agree. I agree, fam. And I think, and my only problem is, like, I was I was reading about Japanese reparations, and they had some friction between different groups, but those groups were just different groups, and they had friction about who got, right. like, who got paid, how much they got paid. I think those are legitimate disagreements, right? So I don't have a problem with right. le legitimate disagreements, how far back, you know, who is eligible, who is ineligible. I think those kinds of disagreements are, are, are legitimate, so I understand why those were different. Well, we had different orgs doing the civil rights movement. I understand different people doing different things. So I'm not saying, like, there should never be another org. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, though, if, right. if, if you have people who believe the same thing that ADOS has been saying since day one, why are you over there? You don't even have any differences. You know what I mean? With, with anything that we're doing. Or if you are over there, why are you over there with a different name? Or why aren't you over there saying, "Hey, I'm I'm going to be I'm going to be uh Ado I'm going to be U.S. slavery descendants," but when it comes to the O and B, I'm going to go with Ados. Like I like that like that you could have done that. Like you have to have you have to try to own this, and that's just the weird part to me. Well, well, you know, unfortunately, some people will cut off their nose and spike their face. That's true. I mean, that's just that's just a real thing that people do. But I think I think what you're doing is, is special. I really do. I, I've listened to you a few times, and there's not <laughs> anything that I hear that doesn't make sense when you think about it in its entirety. And I think we need to get, you know, focused collectively. And, and if not, you know, keep doing what you're doing. You're going to get us there. I appreciate you, fam. I appreciate you. Thank you, fam. You have a good one. Okay. Enjoy the rest of your have night. Okay. Yeah, I think sometimes, yeah, that, that that burst, that burst might be what you need. Like, I, I agree with him. Like, that burst, you know, it might, like, listen, I do think, you know, you we got strength in with the fight, you know, because these white people ain't, listen, Rufo and all them, they're not playing. They're not playing. And, like, I just feel like we can't be playing. I feel like they ain't playing, we can't play. So that's just how I feel about it. I don't know what everybody else is, you know, talking about it. Uh, 404, 404, what's your name? Where you calling from? What's on your mind? Peace, power, and reparations. You bet. This is Jahadu calling out of Woodstock, Georgia. How you doing? Pretty good. How about yourself? What's this I'm doing good, family. I'm a, I'm, I'm a Navy veteran. Okay. And one thing that I one thing that I totally agree with you on is the uniformity, especially when it comes to the O and B. We can't be all over the place. We can't be all over over the place. Being split up, that's not gonna work, especially for something like this. We can be FBA, we can be Freedmen, we can be Negroes, we can be all of that outside of the OMB. But when it comes to the OMB, we need to be Adolf, American descendants of slavery. We need to be all on one accord. We need to be agreeable on one thing. In the military, we call this, we call what's going on in the reparations music and the reparations movement a cluster. F, F bomb. We call it a cluster F word. That's what we call it. And that's what's going on right now. Mm. When it comes to military, they when it comes to the military, they military, they have one mission and they on the same accord. They have one target. And that's how we gotta be going forward. We can't afford to be split up in factions and the groups. We better together. And that's what I've learned from all, everything that's been going on. And 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 the, that one target, I don't think people understand. Like the 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 systemic institutionalized oppression 
of American descendants of slavery is the target. Like the target is that. That's the reason that we're fighting for reparations. You didn't you when you when you when I saw you at the 2019 conference or when you got in this movement of 2020, 2021 or whatever, like, but when I saw people at the conference, we we understood that we're fighting this monster, right? That's the monster over there. Somehow I don't know how some people have made me the monster. I'm not the monster. I never cussed out none of y'all except for one. <laughs> I tell the or, truth and shame the devil. And some some people some people on Twitter, and excuse me, sorry for interjecting, some people on Twitter know me as Harriet Tubman's Pistol. That's what I go by on Twitter. Mm-hmm. But uh, just for me being a just for me being a veteran, I know that you have to be on one of one accord. And in the military, we call that uniformity. We have to go forth with uniformity in this reparations movement, especially when it comes to the OMB. When it when when we want our designation, and that's how things have to be going forward. Like I like I said, what I've learned from this is we have to stop these uh, this ideology gang banging and just be on one accord. And I'm rolling with I'm rolling with Adolf. That's what I I'm, appreciate that's you. What I'm rolling with. I appreciate and you, fam. Whoever, hey, if you want, if you think about it, if that, you that's cool. Appreciate. I, I I know the significance of the uniformity, and I'm cool with that. I can be FBA outside of the OMB. I can be a freeman outside of the OMB. You can be a small chicken if you want to outside of the OMB. I, I identify as a baby bird. I do not, you know, I, you know, I, I don't know. Agreed. <laughs> I, I, I identify as a blue devil. So don't, don't none of that matter, family. We, we, this is serious business, and this is going to, we want this to go into perpetuity. The next 50, 100 years for our people to be identified and to get the exact resources that they deserve. I hear you, fam. I thank you. I appreciate you too. I appreciate you too. Like you just, I, you know, thank you. I, and I, I think, you know, I think the thing that happens that a lot of people don't understand is that like, when you go into the OMB, that is a political act, right? This is not calling into a show, right? This is not, um, making a YouTube comment. This is a political act. This is serious. This is buttoned up. And so you even needed to have been trained by us instead of just saying, well, what is next week? I'm going to call in. No, that's not how we were training people to call. That's not how we were training people to write letters. We were training people. We were even having conversations with people about, okay, what does, what, what do, what do you want to say? Because some, some people had problems and I understand it. It was an understandable problem to have about what to say in the letter. So then you had to kind of, like we said, you had to flesh out your own history. What is your own history in America? Talk about what is your what is your parents? Have you ever experienced some anti ADOS discrimination? What is your what is your what is your income? Those are things that we help people find their ADOS story and their ADOS lineage story. That's what we do and that's what we did. And that's why we had way more letters than everybody. Well, we have way more members too. And that's why we had way more uh, phone calls because of what we did and because of how we tried. And we're only going to get better at training. So you have to understand, you have to, at a point, you have to make peace with the fact that this is an organization that is organized for a specific thing. And we have done pretty good in terms of our track record, everything from how we train people to the Harvard rebuttal. We've done pretty good. And if you look at that, you've got to say, we stood up chapters. Hey, these people inside these org, this org is, are serious and they have done what they said they were going to do. And if I'm serious, I have to be a part of that. You can go to joinados.com right now and become a member of what we do. Listen, this is serious business. This is serious business. This is not for no games. 954, what's your name? Where you calling from? What's on your mind? Coming to you. Hey, Matt. How are you doing? Pretty good. How about you? I'm doing well. This is um, Ulum off of Twitter. Um, I want to call and say a couple of things. Sure. I um, saw I saw something you put up was, about um, disaggregation was, of the Asians, too. I saw something you put up about this. I saw something you put up, I think, about disaggregation of the Asians, too, earlier. But go ahead, fam. I'm sorry. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm going to get to the Asians. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> the first thing I ain't trying to say you should. I'm just saying good tweet. Caller who called in, the, the one who called from South Florida, who was half Nigerian and half Adolf. Yeah. Uh huh. Mm hmm. I know South Florida very well, and let me just say that everyone in South Florida goes by ethnicity. If you go down there, the first question they ask you is, where are you from? Where mm. are you from? Where are you from? Like, mm. that is the number one question that you would be asked. So the reason why I bring that up is because um, everyone who's, who's immigrated here, they designate themselves by ethnic designations. So, like, it, it, it only makes sense for you to support even more rigor- rigorously a disaggregation ethnically in America and ask for his question about does he does you know does he belong in Adolf? Of course he does because he's by ethnic. But the one thing I would say to him is you don't live in Nigeria, you live in America. So either you support the Adolf thing or mm-hmm. you don't. So that's that's his decision. 
Mm-hmm. The second thing I would say is about that OMB phone call. I called into the OMB phone call. Um, I think I called in the last two days. Mm-hmm. Like that. Couldn't get through. The, um, yeah, I, I called in and I wrote, you know, and I wrote a letter. But the second to the last day that I called in, um, a girl named Anna Kasparian called in. And for those of you who don't know, TYT has an Anna Kasparian um, anchor who talks on that show. Now, I don't know if that was the same Anna Kasparian from TYT, but I don't know how many Anna Kasparians there are in the world. Mm. But the day, the second day, the second to last day that I called in, Anna Kasparian called in. And she sat up there talking about how she's men of this and so on and so on and so forth. The reason why I'm bringing that up is because these immigrants, these first gens or whatever, they will sit here and lie to you all damn day and talk to you about how everything is class based and how everything <laughs> and, how, and how everything is blah 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 blah. Be right on the so, OMB call. This is Anna. Up, <laughs> yeah. So when it comes to OMB, you call in talking about how you need to be ethnically different. <laughs> different. <laughs> different. And then regarding that OMB phone call, and I'm trying to say this as nice as I can. I'm not trying to frighten anybody. I'm just trying to be. Uh, you know, let me say this the right way. The the non ADOS people, the dispenser groups who called in on the OMB phone call and who had all of that um bickering <laughs> and going back and forth. Uh are y'all crazy? Because <laughs> you you can't call in to the federal government and do that. Are you uh, do y'all realize that state and federal governments are adversarial? These people will hunt you down and throw you in jail for lying. For lying. Like, and, and like, I'm not trying to scare anybody, but, like, that was not the time for you to call in and settle a debt with me back just because you're mad. Like, that was stupid. That's dumb. Like, the, the listen, the, the, the Armenians, they were in lockstep on those phone calls. There was no deviation. Like, like you know, the, the, the OMB panel, they probably had to throw out those phone calls, but they were like, look, if we take this seriously, we may have to do some federal investigations here. Like, <laughs> like, like y'all need to, like, the people got to focus. Like, the... The the, the 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 non ADL people who are just mad because they mad, y'all got to compart you know learn how to compartmentalize and learn how to just save your anger with something else. But when it comes to something as serious as that, y'all should have just joined us and just been lockstep with us because that was a moment of maturity and and and, and just understanding what was going on. Now regarding these Asians, listen, the you know the Asians might talk a lot of shit about working hard. But, you know, but when it comes to getting these government stuff, they get it. Mm-hmm. And, you know, online, I posted a whole thread about um, about the disaggregation of AAPI, which is Asian American Pacific Islanders. If, you know, if you want to see it, 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 it's on Twitter. It's pretty long. But long story short is these Asians, they started disaggregating in 1996 or something like that. They started disaggregating underneath President Bill Clinton. They got their first... Uh, their first executive order under President Bill Clinton, and, and ever since President Bill Clinton, every single president, whether it's re- whether it's Republican or Democratic, has basically renewed their executive order and added more things to it. That's what they're doing. That's how th- that's how the AAPI are getting what they want and getting the segregation, getting everything else. They're just they're just sidestepping Congress and just going straight to the executive orders. And like just recently, um, President Biden just signed a 1.2 trillion dollar. Um, what do you call it, a uh, spending bill or whatever? You know, if, if you look at that spending bill, there are, there are set-asides for Vietnamese Americans because of the Vietnamese War. If you if you research the Vietnamese history in America, they are slowly building a case for Vietnamese reparations. In that bill, mm-hmm. there's money set aside for Vietnamese families to establish genealogies for family members who were murdered during the Vietnamese War. What does that sound like? <laughs> what does that sound like? <laughs> so I mean, like, like, listen, listen. Everybody, like, you know, all of these, all these people who just swear that we're xenophobic, which we're not, but the people who just swear that we hate immigrants, all your immigrant friends are lying to you. They're all lying to you. <laughs> everybody <laughs> is very quiet about how they are moving, you know, behind the scenes and getting what they need to get. No, you know, just, just like, just like, put all this stuff, like, you know. You know, maybe my perspective, maybe my um, outlook is different because I live in South Florida and I, and I know how hard the ethnic nations are down there. Like to me, this makes perfect sense. Like me, you know, you know, if you don't live in New York City or South Florida where you have a bunch of different ethnicities in your face, you probably have a hard time with this. But just you know, you have to grow for a second and realize that you need to get what you need to get from the government. You need to be disaggregated and you need to grow up in certain areas and be serious. So like that's all I wanted to say tonight. You know, I I, I I you know I appreciate you and I I I think you know if people don't get their stuff together they gonna everybody gonna get it before we get it. 
Like we'll we'll still be we'll still be behind. And I you, let me just say this. I, I said this earlier, and I need to look it up. I believe when you know when you talk about the 1996 and the, and the Asians and the uh, uh, disaggregation. And night, I believe that's around the same time that the Urban League opposed this aggregation for blacks back then. That I think I think they have always been an impediment. And this and, and this thing that they say, oh well, that will that'll be in the way and you won't be able to count us, that's totally wrong. It's so easy to count. Africans just got here. And 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 most black immigrants didn't get 1965. It's so easy to count y'all. It's so easy. <laughs> what are y'all talking about? I mean it's I mean, uh, you know, online people will be like, oh, my God, how do we um, how do we establish the Adolf genealogies? How do we know who is a slave? Baby, the, the, the federal government has a whole division that deals with immigration. They can just take all the black dead and use immigrated here, subtract them from the number, and just and, and, and do an indirect calculation. This is not hard. This is not hard. Like, this is not hard. <laughs> This is not difficult. Like it's, it's like, like online. I'm like, my guys, like, check my history. I've answered every question that y'all are asking. I've has been answered. answered. Like, has been already been answered. Point, y'all, at this point, y'all are being willfully stupid. I'm, you know, I hate calling black people stupid, but you're being stupid. Like, like it's, like I don't know what it takes for y'all to understand that y'all have to learn how to leave the playground and take on the playground and come together when it's time to come together. These other groups ain't playing with y'all. I don't care what they tell you about we all black. I heard what they tell you about, you know, you know, you know, we all poor and class based bullshit. When it comes to my friends in South Florida, I have friends in South Florida who are different ethnicities. They miss out that they are of X and Y ethnicity for me. They have no problem saying that. And people who are called my friends, that should be a point where you have to, where you have to draw all these, you know, all of this stale panafricanism and just realize me everybody else is doing it everybody else is doing it I, I agree everybody. I agree fam I agree fam thank you so much thank you so much I appreciate your call great call thank fam thank you and I think you should be I mean at a certain point like if you ask somebody what they are and they might say hey I'm I'm half Nigerian uh, I'm 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 half Nigerian half Ghanaian or whatever right see like you should be able to say oh I'm full ADOS Oh, you should be able to say I'm half eight hours and I'm half Jamaican. You should be able to say whatever you are. Like that's just what it's supposed. That's what you you just this this black don't mean nothing. Like that's the thing. Like there's a black category, but it's what's just aggregated under the category that has the meaning, right? So in ninety percent of so. I, I, the fact that you, the fact that you have to just go, everybody else gets the aggregate. You just got to go around calling yourself blackity blackity black. It doesn't capture who we are. And everybody else has something that captures who they are. So I'm going to try to take a couple more calls, and we're going to get out of here. Fam. I know it's late. I just want everybody, the most of people I could get to try to get their word in. Uh, 412, 412, what's your name? Where you calling from? What's on your mind? Hi, is that? My name is Brene. I'm calling from um, Pennsylvania, Pittsburgh. How are you? I'm doing well. How about yourself? I'm fine. You know, and I was looking at that information from the OMB, too, and I, I really think this is what... My mind, I'm always conspiracy theorist. <laughs> we, you did the work. You did the paperwork. We wrote letters. We did all of that. Mm-hmm. SBA, Freeman, Black Freeman, and American Negro, why did they not settle on the people who did the work today? I, I, to me, I think they want to continue the chaos along with, because like you said, like the gentleman said who was in the Navy, he said, at the end of the day, we can call each other whatever we want to call it at the end of the day. Or we can call ourselves FBA or, the, uh, um, you know, uh, Freeman. But long as that title of America, I mean, ADOS is in with OMB, OMB should just took it. See, they shouldn't have to say no to that. And I want to know who sits on the board of OMB to decide to tell us who we are. As an individual, I know my grandfather, my great grandfather. We built stuff. We, uh, we, we, we are in this. So I was just looking at pictures from the eight, from from the 1920s on down in that, and it gets it burns me to why we have to fight, and the government knows who we are. And this is where I'm having a hard time. Yeah, we we, we we went but, out there. We but went go on, the but meetings, we went, we did everything. But hold on, fam. They decided. Well, you already did the work. Well, here's the thing, too. We've been here. We've been here longer than anybody, and we can't get disaggregated. That's what infuriates me. Like we've been here longer than anybody, and we can't get disaggregated. But let me ask your answer your question. I'm gonna see what you say to it, and you can continue. I think they said that because because it get we gave them like one of the one of the things that gave them an out was civil rights organizations opposed, right? 
The other thing was, I think by not agreeing, we gave them an easy out. And I think they just took it. Yeah. I believe it. I, I Honestly, I believe it. I, I, I mean, on that part, I believe it. And I read some about with the NAACP and with the National Urban League. And I said, well, they behind us also with them. I, I, there's things that run in my mind. Because they know you're the one. FBA, we, we, they know they ain't put on no paperwork. You don't even, he don't even have representatives to do the, he's not even a group. He don't have a .org. Freeman don't, they may have a little bit of people, but they don't organize like you. You did the organization. They should have looked at the paperwork and the people who was there behind it. I don't care how many phone calls that came in. Freeman, SBA, if you got the document, if you got the proof, use the proof that's there. That's all. I'm so mad right now. I don't know. At this point, the United States government, you can't dictate who we are. We've been here 458 years, and I can continue to say it. Like I said, I'm looking, I looked at pictures a couple days ago. What irks me is I'm looking at my family's faces who worked hard, who understood this land, who know where we are. We shouldn't have to decide if you come over from another country. You know who the hell we are. My family didn't come from Africa. Maybe they did 400 years ago. My family might have been here too, but you can't tell me who we are. As a people, we shouldn't have to fight with other groups coming in the United States. Immigrants, we got to fight with black immigrants, other Chinese. We shouldn't have to do that. Nope. You know we built it. This is our ground. Our, this is our foundation. I agree. We built it. Yep. Regardless, it? Mm-hmm. they know. They know. They know. And it never hurts me because I think they want to continue the chaos. Mm. Honestly, I do. Mm. It doesn't have to be about ego. Because I'm, I'm passionate about this. It's not about ego. Who built it? We built it. I agree. Our family's tough, and they know it. And I am pissed. I understand. I'm sorry, I'm getting emotional, but no, I understand. It angers me. I understand. The I think next the, generation. Yeah, I think the we. Next yeah. Generation, they got to do the same thing. Yeah, this this constant fight. They and fight too hard. And, and, and fam, let me just say this. And I think the other part of it is like, this is an abdication of leadership by the other leaders that we had. There is no way that everybody is, it's not just that everybody came in this country and passed us economically. They got disaggregated. They got everything first. So you have to ask yourself after King, you know, got, got, got assassinated oh, on that. That was a mistake. Oh, <laughs> oh. My great grand told me that was a mistake. And so his deathbed, he told me that was a mistake. Mm. And I'm sorry to say it, but he told me that. Well, I appreciate you, family. Now, let me just say, I understand you. I understand how you feel. I think right. we've, I think we've all felt that too. And I, you know, we right here, but we 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 not gonna stop right here. Though. We gonna keep on pushing. We gonna keep on pushing and give them. They they need they need they I need know. they need more information and they need they need a lot of stuff. They said that they need, and we are gonna try to give it to them. <laughs> so that's crazy. You don't need that. They can look at the books and see already what's there. What what, what is the what is the well gap? Yeah. They got it there. They see it. They see I, it every day. I understand. I, I mean, I think. I mean, I think. I mean, I, 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 for me, for me, I think the biggest problem is the is the other orgs, right? Because they're basically telling OMB not to respect us, and we haven't been around long enough. And I think we have to grow big enough to where and 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 and, and just flex our organizational muscle to the point to where you can't deny that this group is the new, this is a new leadership right. for, our, for, for ADOS America. You cannot deny it anymore because I know that these right. groups, these right. groups don't have any grassroots, but other people, they will be, might not know it. So we, we have to, we have to build and right. grow and grow and build and build and grow and grow and build. So I thank you for calling in fam. I'm gonna try to get out of here in one second, but I appreciate thank you. you. My love. you thank you. Night. You too. Thank bye-bye. You. Bye-bye. Uh, two, one, five. Uh, and then one last call and then I'm out. How you doing? Two, one, five. Yeah, how you doing? I'm okay. How you feeling, man? Pretty good. How about you? Oh, I'm doing. I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Um, okay, so listening to the response to the OMB, I, I think that they were somewhat disingenuous with trying to tie disaggregation solely to reparations. Mm. Disaggregation is merely about res- Reparations. It's also about service action, uh, education, health. Um, it just it, it's 
not solely tied just to reparations, right? Yep. However, that's all they really mentioned in the response was, oh, they, they wanted to segregate solely for, well, they did say solely, but they insinuated that it was solely for reparations. And I think they want to tie desegregation to reparations because reparations had such a negative connotation in some people's minds. And I think that was real disingenuous. I think that was real dirty. Well, um, you mean the well, you mean the part where they talked about federal? Is it how it's in terms of to, how to, how it to be used for federal programs or something like that? You talking about that little line that nobody asked for? Right, mm-hmm. right, right. But again, they didn't mention all the other things that disaggregation is, is going to be used for. You know, they kind of just tried to throw in um, uh, they it's going to be used for reparations and not. You know, they they really wanted to tie reparations to it so that, you know, the people who have that negative, uh, those negative connotations about reparations will automatically say, okay, well, look, we can't, we don't want to support this aggregation. I understand. Um, and I, I think also that the the, the, Nat, the Urban League and the ACP, they really are confused about their mission. Um, at one point, it was about civil rights, but when it was about civil rights, it was about civil rights for black people because there weren't a lot of immigrants in the in the country at that time. I think now they're pivoting Near zero. <laughs> civil rights for everyone, and I don't think that the original mission was civil rights for everyone. Well, I don't think it was a... No, it was it was it was explicitly. They yeah, they called themselves the civil rights movement, but they were fighting for they were fighting for who were then black people because there was no there were no black immigrants here. They were to the right of the decimal point, so they were fighting for black people. And then they kept the civil rights. And then Al Sharpton told you, and I'm gonna let you go, fam. But I appreciate you. I appreciate I appreciate everything you said, and I agree with you. Um, I think I think I think I'm just trying to get to one more caller so we can get. But I think, but now they Al Sharpton told you, no, we don't fight. Civil rights are for all people, not just black people. He told you that. He's fighting, he's fighting, he's, he has, I put some up on my page, he was fighting for trans rights, he's fighting for women's rights, he fights for immigrant rights, he fights for everything. Well, somebody who fights for everything fights for nothing, right? That means you are just doing, you are ministering to people, that's not advocacy. You need somebody who fights specifically for you, and the only movement that you have that's doing that, with, with the organizational muscle to do something about it, is ADOS. That's the only thing. This is my last caller, 313, I'm, I'm going to go to the, my, this is, you're going to be my last caller for tonight. What's your name? Where you calling from? What's on your mind? <laughs> Hello, everybody. Hey! You, I admire your, I admire your perseverance and your strength. You are one wonderful woman. Let Thank you. Me. That's anyway, a great call to end on right there. <laughs> Flattery will get you everywhere. No, I'm <laughs> Whenever I, excuse me, whenever I say that I am an American descendant of the institution of slavery, and I say that that's what we are. A lot of Adels say that they don't want the slavery to be called a slave. Mm-hmm. So many of us seem to want to dismiss institutional slavery out of shame. But I say to them, you know, uh, how do you feel shame for those that endure chattel slavery, mm. those with no name? How could you be ashamed of them? The Africans come here and they want to say uh, slavery was a blip in their history. We didn't come from slavery. The Europeans want to say, well, it was uh, just an aberration. You need to forget it. They, they would like to erase us. The name Eidos, American descendant of slavery, when I say it, I honor those with no name those who could not speak for themselves, those who were victims. They say that we are victims. We're, 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 we're victimhood because we, we, we identify with Eros and with the institution of slavery. But I say no. We have to understand that we are victors. We are victors who are advocating and speaking for those who had no voice to speak. I am a victor. And I'm honoring my ancestors every time I say that I'm an American descendant.
descendant of the institution of slavery. Now, what the gentleman said about the NAACP, the Urban League, they were built on pan-Africanism. We have been living with pan-Africanism since uh, W.B. Du Bois. Mm. And we only, when the Eidos movement came about, did we decide to live on lineage, to claim our lineage. That's why I appreciate what you do so much. And I don't know where you get the strength to do it. <laughs> I, I, I really admire you for this. I've been here 70 years, and this is the first uh, nomenclature for our group of people that I accept. Mm. African American never made any sense to me. Black, I'm black and I'm proud. I tried to be black laying in the sun. <laughs> you could never get it. Huh? And then I realized, damn, I ain't black. You know, American descendant of slavery. That's who I am. And I'm proud of it. And I want to thank you. Thank you. For bringing this in, into my spirit. Blessings. And, and thank you. And thank you. And let me just say, like, to me, I, I, I have, I, 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 you know, I don't think people understand that like most groups that come from like the thing that we come from, they don't make it. And I've always said it here. To me, this is a hero's journey, right? And I don't understand how you could be embarrassed about people who died so you could live, right? These are people who endured slavery, fought slave revolts, all of that stuff, so that you could have a better life in America, right? And so you can't be ashamed of people who fought oppression. That's like, that's like, that's the most, that is always the hero. Like the hero is never the person who oppresses. You watch any movie, you can watch any movie with a hero in it. I don't care what, the hero is never the oppressor. The hero, the job of the hero is to fight the oppressor and overcome the oppressor. And that's who we have been in our entire history of America. So I don't know how you can be the hero in the story and be ashamed. <laughs> I totally agree with you. We are not victims. We are the victor. Speaking for our ancestors. You know how you know how we could become the victim? Ancestors. You know how you know you know the and only way true. you know the only way we become the victim? You know the only way we become the victim? The only way we become the victim if it's, is if we stop fighting. If you stop fighting, then you become the victim. Go ahead, fam. I'm sorry. You're trying to erase them. Yep. Yes. Yes. So I, I'm trying to reach out to them to, uh, to explain that it is the institution of slavery that we're talking about here. And that we are not victims. We are victors. And we have to remember that in order for us to go forward and to accept the nomenclature of American descendants of the introducing slavery. Absolutely. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. you. Thank you so much. Not as much as I appreciate you. No. <laughs> Thank Take you, care. fam. I appreciate it. We're going to get there. We're going to get there by and by. All right, fam. Well, it's these gatekeepers, these gatekeepers that are keeping us from getting there. Well, I, I agree with you. I agree with you. But I think, I think, I think if we, I think if, but see, the thing about it is they don't run America. They're paid to be gatekeepers. You just got to become bigger than the gatekeepers. Like you have to become so big that the, 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 the people who pay the gatekeepers realize, oh, you ain't keeping the gate no more because the, 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 the everybody's all out in the field. Right. So the gate got bust open. So once you bust open the gate, they realize, oh, this isn't working anymore. So we don't, these gatekeepers have failed at their job. They got to go. And that's, we, that's how big we have to get to where, you know what happens when the yeah. gatekeeper don't keep the gate? You, it's, 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 it's everybody, everything is everywhere. Whatever you were trying to keep in that gate is now everywhere. And then, then whoever owns the land is like, oh, the gatekeeper, it don't work no more. It don't work. And that's when you've won. And I, and, and the thing is we can get there. Like, I don't like there already. I was on a call. I remember being in clubhouse with Derrick Johnson years ago when clubhouse was hot and him, and him telling me like, yeah, Yvette, we all know that you and Ados are responsible for this whole push reference. Everybody knows that. Like, so it's not like they don't know. <laughs> okay. They, they know. Yes. See, I, that's why I don't understand how you have the fortitude to be able to deal with all of this. And for the years that you've been dealing, I'm tired of fighting. I'm I mean, 14 fight years. Behaviors. 14 I've years. I've through the civil rights movement. I've seen them get rid of the voting rights, uh, affirmative action. And I'm wondering, what in the world? 
but that was not what we really needed. Yeah. Because we were on the wrong track, even that if we were on the wrong track. Well, I'm to say it loud, I'm black and I'm proud instead of uh, we identified as a race instead of an ethnicity as a lineage at that time. Yeah. So now you put the script on them. You know, we are gonna stand up and jump, dump the table over is what you're doing. Yeah, you got to. Same and I, you know, listen. You know, listen, the thing about me, I, I, somebody asked me the other day, well, I don't understand how you, how you keep fighting, why you keep fighting. Listen, it's hard, people, it's hard to fight me. I'm a hard one to fight. It's hard to fight somebody who likes the taste of their own blood. You know, it don't matter to me when you punch me in the mouth. I'm going to lick it. <laughs> Go back to fight the rubber roll. Because it's just, that's just what it is. You have to, like, if you, en- if, if you enjoy the tussle, like, if you, en- like, even if you, you know, like, I, I haven't done it lately, but if you enjoy martial arts or whatever, you enjoy that part of it. You don't just enjoy, like, the win. You have to enjoy the process. Whatever you're doing, you got to enjoy the process. If you don't enjoy the process, process of fighting so if this case is fighting you have to get into the process right and that's kind of where i am with it i mean i'm not saying i don't have moments of frustration that's not what i'm saying like hearing somebody just go at me at an omb call this is like dude what are we doing this is so unserious that's a serious moment of frustration but i feel like i feel like that's just that's just the path is just the path and there's nothing you can do but just keep going through the path well thank you i appreciate you. you so much I appreciate you, fam. Bless you. Keep doing, keep doing what you do. I, I appreciate you. Have a good thank one. Thank you. Have you a good too. night. Blessings for you. Thank you. So, Bye. thank you so much. I appreciate you. Yeah, I just, you know, I just, you know, I, I feel, I feel honestly like, you know, this is just the path is just the path, and everybody's gonna have to decide what they're gonna do with the path. I mean, you know, it, 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 it is what it is, and it ain't what it ain't. Everybody's gonna have to decide what are you gonna do with the path that's in front of you, right? Like, like, you know. I, it just is what it is and we are what we are you don't get to determine the terrain on which you fight and i don't understand why people don't consider like the person who is really the person the person who devised all this racism and systemic oppression that's the villain y'all running around with people say, i don't like the term slavery you run around acting like you the villain you're not the villain that's not that's not what the, that's not the villain like you think you think you think you're the villain you're not the villain in this story you're supposed to win the story that's what it's supposed to be. You're the hero. Your people were the heroes. They endure. You're supposed to keep it going. That fight. Like, we talk a lot. We talk a lot about, about inheritance of wealth. And that's true. But sometimes you inherit a fight. And it just is what it is. And it don't do no good. It don't do no good. And I understand why you do it. But if you inherit a fight, you inherit a fight. And that's what it is. You just got to come out the womb swinging. And that's what happened. You inherited a fight. And th- so here we are. <laughs> you inherited the fight. And so we here fighting. This is what we were born into. You can't him and haw about it, right? But we are the heroes of this story, and you got to act like it. Ain't nothing to be ashamed of. So anyway, fam, we've been here long enough. I'm going to let y'all go. Be easy breezy. Don't bother nobody. Don't let nobody bother you. And I will see uh, you all next time.